The following broadcast of Houston Arrows Hockey is a UPN 20 Sports presentation. The second tour of duty commences for the Houston Arrows tonight. Last year's second place finish in the West was only the beginning to a bright future that lies ahead this season. Every 70 years, there's Haley's Comet. Tonight, the Arrows will face a flurry of Comets here in Fort Wayne. It's Saturday night on ice next on UPN 20. Live from Fort Wayne, Indiana, it's Saturday night on ice. Tonight, the Houston Arrows take on the Fort Wayne Comets in live International Hockey League action. A very pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Allen County War Memorial. I'm Adam Gordon. I'm really excited about the 95-96 regular season, and I'm excited about my broadcast partner tonight. Normally, it's Mike Greenlee, but tonight I get goaltender Troy Gamble. Why are you up here tonight? Well, Adam, in the last exhibition game, I sustained a little bit of a shoulder injury that's going to keep me out until Thursday. Hopefully, I can practice Monday and be back in the lineup. But that means my broadcast partner, Mike Greenley, must be doing something. We've got to find him. Mike, where are you? Adam, I'm down here on ice level, and tonight I'll be backing up Rob Dobson. Rob Dobson had a very good preseason, showing that he is mentally and physically ready for this season. Also, I'll be giving you some sideline reports throughout the game. Back up to you, Adam. Thanks, Mike. He's not the best color man in the league for nothing, folks. And the Arrows don't have the best defense in the league for nothing. We start with Gord Krupke and Miles O'Connor. Well, Gord Krupke has come in and given us a big, solid defenseman to move people out in front of the net. And then Miles O'Connor, that power play specialist, he's going to be the quarterback on our power play. He's going to push the puck up ice for us. The Arrows' blue line has a lot of NHL experience, and you can talk about two of the best in Gord Donnelly and Jim Pack. Well, it's hard to believe that we just acquired these two. Jim Pack has uh, two Stanley Cup rings from the Pittsburgh Penguins, and Gord Donnelly has uh, had a great NHL career. It's time for the Oshman's Game Plan, brought to you by Oshman Supersports USA. Well, we have to set the pace tonight. We're playing in the jungle, so we have to come out and be well. Then we have to keep our composure. This place can get very loud in here. We gotta stay together. And then we gotta play as a unit, Adam. And play as a unit, we have to keep it simple. We have to push the puck up the ice and uh, take it one shift at a time. In goal tonight for the Arrows, it'll be Rob Dobson. For the Fort Wayne Comets, Peter Ng should be a great hockey game. When we return, we'll look more in depth into the Arrows defense with head coach Terry Ruskowski, and we'll be right back. Saturday Night on Ice is sponsored by Southwest Airlines, by Columbia Hospital, by Chrysler Plymouth, by Dodge, by Jeep Eagle, and by Hilo Auto Parts. Welcome back to the Allen County War Memorial. Adam Gordon with head coach Terry Ruskowski in a big game tonight for the Arrows against the Fort Wayne Comics, kicking off the 95-96 season. You've made some changes, Terry, on the blue line. Two guys that played well in the preseason were uh, Gord Krupke and Miles O'Connor. Well, we picked them up during the summertime. That's one of our main priorities is to strengthen up our defense. Uh, get guys that come up on the play. Get guys that are rough and tough in the corner. Do not get beat one-on-one. -on -one. We picked up uh, Miles O'Connor. He can do that. He can get the puck, move it up. Uh, you can see by his penalty minutes, he can. He doesn't back away either. Uh, Gord Krupke is more of a home, stay-home defenseman. Uh, punish, punish him in front of the net. Uh, tough in the corners. Doesn't get beat. Moves the puck up pretty well. So those two guys were a great acquisition to our team. And just when you thought the defense was strong, you made it stronger with Gord Donnelly and Jim Pack? Well, we got tougher and we got uh, actually better uh, with, with those two players. Uh, Gord, Gord Donnelly, is, uh, he can play forward and defense, which is, comes in very handy in this league especially. Uh, he's a tough guy. He's really tough. He's bonafide heavyweight tough, and if something gets out of the way, I'm sure that Gord will put it back. But he's also a very capable and good player, so we're really lucky to get him. And very, uh, I'm, I'm very happy anyways, for sure. Uh, Jim Pack, I played with him just a tad in, in Pittsburgh. I was going out while he was coming in, and he sure had a bright future. And, I don't know how we got him, boy. I'll tell you, Pete did a great job of getting him, but uh, we're very happy he's here. He's the type of guy that gets the puck and moves it up and comes up with the play, and he's going to add a lot of offense to, uh, to our defense. So those four guys, uh, uh, I'm very curious and I'm very excited to see how they work together, and I hope they click right off the bat and hopefully not take too many games to, uh, to gel as one. Well, best of luck, Coach. 
Thank you very much. Head coach Terry Ruskowski will have the opening face-off when we return. Welcome to the Allen County War Memorial. I'm Adam Gordon, joined by Troy Gamble tonight. Again, if you're just joining us, Troy hurt his shoulder in the preseason game against the Minnesota Moose. And Mike Greenlee, who's normally my broadcast partner, will be down backing up uh, Rob Dobson, and he'll make some sideline reports from now and then. They're going through the starting lineups. 44 years the Fort Wayne Comets have been around. And, you know, some people might think, Fort Wayne, this couldn't possibly be a very strong franchise. Au contraire, my friend. This is likely one of the stronger franchises in the league when you think of it has 8,100 seats, and they usually average about 7,900. This is a tough ticket in Fort Wayne to come by, and especially opening night. This has been sold out here weeks in advance. Since they're going through all of the Fort Wayne Comets, we have a little time here, Troy, and we never really got a chance to preview a couple of the guys with the Fort Wayne Comets. Colin Chin, this is a guy that's a, a local born and raised guy right here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and he is the mainstay of this Fort Wayne hockey club. Well, Colin's been here now. He's going into his 11th year in a Comet uniform, and... People that follow sports know that uh, that is a rarity. People don't stay in one organization that long, and Colin's been able to stay, stay in great shape, and, and do a lot of positive things here with the organization. So Colin's one of the mainstays here. Also, Peter Ring uh, has come in uh, last year. He's got an NHL experience. Uh, he's the goaltender here of choice, and uh, they're expecting big things from him this year, Adam. When you talk about returning vets for the Houston Arrows, I'll just give you two names. Scott O'Neill, Mark Freer. Those guys really mean a lot to this Arrow Hockey Club. Well, they, they certainly do. They're playing on our number one line, and uh, we're looking for big years from both Scotty and Mark. Mark's going to try to get the puck to Scotty a little bit more. I, I talked to Scotty the other day, and uh, Scotty said he wants to shoot the puck a little bit more this year, Adam, and, and that means uh, Mark's going to have to dish it off to him, and we've got Scott McCoy playing on the other wing there, so that's going to be a formidable line, uh, hopefully tonight and for a long time this season. So we're getting set. They're just finishing up the starting lineups for the Fort Wayne Comets. They will not... They will not do the whole team for the Houston Arrows. And one of the things that I think will be very interesting, you talked about coming out and being physical and aggressive, not getting down early, and it brings us to actually maybe something that might be a hindrance to the Arrows at the start, and it's one of the rule changes I'd like to go in. They're really going to take a, a crackdown from the NHL and watch the hooking and the holding. Well, what they're trying to do is, Adam, is they're trying to speed up the game of hockey. Uh, they felt that with the New Jersey Devils winning the Stanley Cup last year, and even a little bit Denver winning in our league, they tried to slow down the play with a, a, a play called the neutral zone trap, and they want to try to get rid of it. Too many people were hooking and obstruction, so what they've tried to do now is, is that they've tried to eliminate that. So if you're hooking up someone that is speeding down the wing, they're going to give the guy a two-minute penalty. And uh, we saw it in preseason, and that's one thing we address today during our meeting. Troy, one of the other changes as far as the Houston Arrows are concerned, they're in the Eastern Conference. What is your likes or dislikes about that? Well, first, my dislike's got to be the weather, Adam. We've got to come up north <laughs> a lot more. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it, it, it puts us in a division where time zones makes it easier we found it tough last year going out to vegas and phoenix two hour time zones they kill you we're going to be playing orlando we're going to be playing atlanta quite a bit and then we're going to be up in detroit and cleveland so i i, I guess it it really doesn't matter that much it, except if you look on paper we have the strongest division in the league there's no doubt you're looking at the detroit vipers the cleveland lumberjacks of course the houston arrows and uh, then you got orlando and atlanta that might be one of the toughest conferences slash divisions in the ihl well it, well, it has to be you know orlando has went out and, and built a solid organization they have a, a pretty good gm and donnie waddell who's been around this league a lot of years the atlanta knights are always going to be competitive and then with detroit going out and signing a few more NHL guys last week, you know, that they're going to put on a good show. So uh, we're we're in for the tough ball. That's why you look at Pete Deneen going out and signing all these veteran defensemen that can play in this league because you need good defense to win. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups. First for the Fort Wayne Comets. Defensively, they'll go with Grant Richardson, along with Brian Straub, who played part last year with the uh, Atlanta Knights. At center, Paul Willette. Then at left wing, Darren Smith. Then at right wing, Oleg Yashin. For the Houston Arrows, starting on defense, it'll be Jim Pack and Steve Jakes. At center, Al Conroy, Scott McCrory, and Mike Maurice are the forwards. And Troy, I'm telling you right now, Al Conroy has been given the team captain's leadership role this year. That is huge, I think, for the Houston Arrows. Well, it is huge. I, I think last year, uh, 
Curtis missed quite a few games uh, with the back injury and I think they were a little worried of, about his back so uh, we made the switch and I'm sure it was hard on Curtis to to give that seat away to Al but uh, Al will take it and represent it the arrows very very well he, he's played the captain role even before we got him last year he was Detroit's captain with the Vipers before we made the trade so he's been in that role for many years Adam also, I'm kind of impressed with the uh, new Fort Wayne Comet sweaters. Uh, they used to be kind of a bland orange. Even though it's the same orange, I think the black that they've added to it really makes it an attractive sweater. Well, they'd be good on Halloween for pumpkin issue, I guess, <laughs> Adam. I don't know. I, I, I like our unis, Adam. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I, I don't know. I've played against the Comet so many times, and I got a lot of uh, memories, so I'm not a big Comet lover. No, but the funny thing is you love this building when you play. Well, I do. Uh, when I played in Kalamazoo two years ago, I was 5-0 and oh in this building, and uh, I was very disappointed I didn't get an opportunity to play tonight. But with Rob Dobson in Nets, uh, that's not going to be a problem. We're going to be strong in goal. Let's take a look at the starting goaltenders for the Arrows. It is Rob Dobson, 17, 16, and 2. That's his record last year, 3.30 goals against average, 88.9 in the save percentage. Did a tremendous job. Is he did a tremendous job and then you look at the starting goaltender for the Fort Wayne Comets it is Peter Ng and you talked about Peter Ng who had the NHL experience well yeah Peter Ng played for the Toronto Maple Leafs for years you're looking at a big goaltender he plays the butterfly style which means he's gonna get his pads down on the ice we told our guys today during our meeting go upstairs on this guy you got to go upstairs so we are just about ready for the national anthem as everybody is ready to go and I'm really excited I'm really excited about I think the start of this hockey game the start of the 95 96 season and uh, our referee tonight by the way we is, have uh, Joe Ernst yes linesman Kevin Mallon and Mark Wilkins as we pause for the singing of the national anthem.
tonight to have a special guest. So we are set for IHL action, the 95-96 season. On the bench for the Houston Arrows, Terry Ruskowski. 132-117-24, his career coaching record last year. A very good record at 38, 35, and 14. He will guide the, the ship this year. A little help from Dave Tippett, who, of course, announced his retirement and will be a full-time assistant coach for the Houston Arrows. The Fort Wayne Comets are led by Dave Farish. And uh, he hasn't had a winning record but once with Moncton, but he's a tremendous coach, and I think the Fort Wayne Comets like his inspirational coaching style. Well, what they wanted from Dave Farish, they wanted a, a guy to come in and show a solid commitment to work with these guys and to make sure that they were in the best possible condition and frame of mind, and, and he's a tough coach. They ran a pregame skate today of 45 minutes. That's unheard of. Usually it's only 30. He means business, Adam. And he means business in the sense of getting a big win here at home. This crowd will be into the game from the minute they drop the puck. They don't call it the jungle for nothing, Troy Gamble, which leads us to something I want to touch upon really quickly, and that is the first five minutes of this hockey game. Well, it, it's crucial in here in Fort Wayne. They call it the jungle because they come out right at you. They're going to dump the puck in and try to force our D right away, and we have to be prepared for it. Uh, another thing is that after they do score a goal, that next shift, Adam, has always been crucial in here because they come right back at you. Houston Arrows, Rob Dobson making the start. Al Conroy will take the face off against Paul Ouellette. Arrows in their white sweaters, trimmed in green and blue. Defend the goal to our right, Paul Ouellette. And the Fort Wayne Comets in their road oranges with the black trim. Defend the goal to our left. And we're underway. Jim Pack for Houston. Pass right side, McCroy. He dumped the puck into the Fort Wayne salt. Back to get it is Smith. Karen Smith pulled into the boards by Maurice. And now it is picked up by the Fort Wayne Comets. They'll rumble to center ice. Up the left side. Yashin in after it behind the net for Fort Wayne, but McCrory beat him to the puck. In behind the net, they dig it out. Jimmy Pack will skate to the near side for Houston. Quick pass out to Maurice. Tip to the line on out. Allen by Richardson. It drives. And a glove save made by Thompson with 30 seconds played here in the first period and no score. Well, that's a great play by Rob there. Uh, we turned the puck over just at the top of the circles, and the defenseman took a, a good hard low shot on Rob, and Rob did the smart thing, just caught it and froze it. You don't want to let everything get out of control right at the start. So you're going to see Rob uh, freezing the puck uh, quite a bit at the start. Dobson was part, along with you in the preseason, of bringing these arrows 2-0-1. One thing we need to touch upon, the Arrows are undefeated in their opener in the season. They've never lost. Well, that's right. Last year we lost in a shootout, but I don't call that a loss, no. Adam. Especially against the eventual Turner Cup champion, Denver Grizzlies. In Denver, too. Face-off controlled by Fort Wayne. Top of the slot, it's Guy Dupuy. Right side, Sean Evans lets the shot go. It was deflected. In behind the net, they grind it up. Kevin Meehan trying to center it out in front. Here's the shot. Scores! Colin Chin. We talked briefly about him. And right off the bat, Fort Wayne on the board. It's 1-0 Comets. That's a tough goal right there as uh, the puck got turned over behind the net and somehow Colin Chin slithered out front and got that great shot right from the point blank range on Rob Dobson and just tough to go. The puck goes here behind the net. Here we go, we got some contact back there. We get caught a little looking. The puck goes back out front, great pass. Colin Chin puts it high over Rob's shoulder. Just a tough break there. Puck is back as we're underway again. 1 0 Fort Wayne. Easy to keep track of goals. Chin is first of the year. And the Comets have it at center ice. And here comes Colin Chin again. A lead pass. It's brought in by me right in. And a penalty coming up to the Arrows. So a very rough start for Houston. We talked about the first five minutes. And although we've played only one minute, it has been all Fort Wayne. Well, there we go, Adam. We said in the opener that once they score a goal, they come right back at us. They came right down the pipe. And there's Terry right now. He's wondering, holy cow, I hope my troops were really ready for this thing. And I saw the guys at the pregame meal today. I know we're ready. We just took a tough break there at the start. Uh, we got Gord there in the penalty box, but they just made another good play. They came right up the middle on us. So that's a little tough break. Now we need our penalty kill unit to come out and have a solid two minutes right here. Penalty to Mike Maurice, two minutes for hooking, and the arrow is shorthanded. Or excuse me, they called it to Gord Donnelly. They announced Maurice, and it's, it's Gord Donnelly. They must have, they got 34 mixed up with 24, I imagine. Off the face-off, Comets have to hustle back to their own zone, and Kevin Wartman, who played last year with the Kansas City Blades, he'll bring it up. 
Wartman skates it up and out of his zone. Skates it down the right side. Wartman fired it into the Houston zone. Back to get it as Krupke blasted it off the boards, and that will be icing on the Comets with 1.43 left in the Donnelly Minor. 1-0 Fort Wayne. Well, that's what we're trying to do there on that penalty killing right there is that we want to force him to dump. We want to let our big guys get back there and get the puck and, and shoot it out. That time it was icing. And uh, so we're trying to right now is uh, we're going, there's uh, their coach right now telling them that they know that we're going to force them before the red line, that they have to make a play before the red line or they're going to be shooting it in on icing all night. So, uh, Look at that haircut, Adam, over there, too. Ooh. Looks like mine. <laughs> you were telling me I was starting to lose the old locks up on top. <laughs> Face off to the right side of Peter Ring. Arrows win the draw. Short-handed. Miles O'Connor has to retreat back to his own blue line. O'Connor pass over to the right side. Krupke, he'll wind it up and blast it back into the Fort Wayne zone. Ing slows in front of his net, and it's turned in behind for Sean Evans. One and a half gone to the first. Comets lead it one to nothing. A minute and a half left to go. And the penalty to Gord Donnelly. Left side, it is Kevin Workman. Drilled it into the arrow zone. Thompson slowed. First snap back, O'Connor. Seen it behind the net. He was jumped on by Rob Murphy for Fort Wayne. And the Comets get it back. Evans get it back. Top of the slot. Here's the drive by Workman. Deflected wide. Puck in behind, and we get a whistle as the... Uh, edging on the lower part of the ice has come off so everybody ready to play but the arena yeah that's uh i've never seen that before i've seen glass break i've seen boards break but i've never seen the edging fall off like that adam we could have a, a slight delay here i imagine no, we've already got a slight delay well i think this could actually be good for us down there just to calm down the bench you know that we took a tough goal there right at the start now we're, we are in the penalty box. We're making a, a pretty good effort at the penalty kill. 1-0. The Houston Arrows lead it. Minute 34 left in the Gordonnelly minor, and we'll bring you the rest of the power play when we return. This is Saturday Night on Ice. Welcome back to Allen County War Memorial. Adam Gordon, Troy Gamble. Comments with that goal by Colin Chen, and he'll take the faceoff against Mark Freer. Well, this is uh, hopefully Mark can win this draw. We're going to have Jim go back and run it hard around and uh, get the puck out. Let's see if that happens. Off the face off, the Comets win the draw, and it'll go back down, and it's Sean Evans. Evans retreats back to his own zone. He's forechecked by Scott Arneal. In behind the net, and they'll bring it out. A minute to go in the power play. Evans, a quick pass, and here comes Colin Chin. Chin across the line, forechecked off by Arneal. Puck came back. Here's Evans, winding, shooting. Stops in the save, and the rebound is kicked over to the near side. Picked up by Freer for Houston. He'll rock the center ice. Freer across the line. Shoots, deflected by Evans. Back along the boards. It's Arneal. He let it go to center. He was harassed by Chin, and Jim Pack is back. At his own blue line for Houston to Mike Yo. What a story he is. Hurt his leg during the preseason, actually in practice. And he's making his first action in an aero uniform this year. They thought it might be four to six weeks, but it was not. Well, it's been very good for us that Mike's been able to come back a lot sooner. And that just shows the great shape that he's in. Puck is knocked away. In there it is Gashin who came in there. We're going to get a penalty coming up, I think, to the Fort Wayne Comets. Well, we got a little boarding penalty down there. Mike had his face up against the glass and... Uh, Looked like Yashin kind of rode him out pretty hard. Or actually, that's Paul Willett, I believe, will get the penalty. Uh, you can't. You don't like to see that anywhere. You know, Paul uh, rides him out hard like that. that that's a dangerous situation, and that's a, a good call by the referee tonight. We don't want to see any of that stuff. Face off is going to be in center ice as Paul Willett sits down, and you can see he kind of gets the old hook in there and drills him to the board. So well, that's a dangerous play, Adam. That's another thing that they're trying to eliminate, especially on a guy like Mike Yo, who just blew out his knee, and uh, you got to give a guy two minutes for that. So we'll go four on four, and I like the setup here. You look at Mike Boris and Vadim Slavchenko with a little open ice, Jim Pack and O'Connor. You've got four pretty good wheelers right there. Less than 15 seconds, we're on the power play, and that could be a key thing. Miles O'Connor off the face off for Houston, and behind his net, oh, four checked away. He has to hustle back to get a good job by Darren Smith, but O'Connor will skate the center. A pass to Slavchenko. He had a great preseason he'll cut it on goal oh, he flipped the shot just wider than that Ing may have gotten a piece on it now the arrows on the power play Slavchenko wheels the drive blistered just wide by O'Connor now left side pack tipped it down for Townsend in the near corner Townsend on for his first shift of the night to Mike Maurice base in the left circle arrows down by a goal but they're on the power play Jimmy Pack to Miles O'Connor right point slipped it down for Slavchenko at the hash marks back is O'Connor here comes Slavchenko fakes now to O'Connor O'Connor can't get a shot away down left side base of the circle Jim Pack Stop by Ing, rebound! Oh, and it 
trickle just wide of the net. Oh, good work in front by Townsend, but he couldn't get it by Peter Ng, and it's shot down the ice by Oleg Yashin. That was great work by uh, Graham there. Graham stood in front of the net. He was taking a beating, and he got a great scoring chance from it. That's what Graham's going to do on the power play. A minute to go on the man advantage for Houston. Jim Pack to Scott Arneal. He'll skate to center. Oh, his pass was turned over, and Rob Murphy will go back to his own blue line and shoot it to center. Arneal with 50 seconds to go on the power play. Quick pass for Jim Pack. Tossed it to Mark Laniel. And now Arneal again. Arneal dumped the puck into the Fort Wayne zone with four minutes gone in the first. Still 1-0 Fort Wayne. A little over a half minute to go on the power play. Puck was cleared by the Comets and the arrows go back. Steve Jakes. What a playoff he had with the Phoenix Roadrunners. And he has definitely earned himself a top spot in the blue line for Houston. Freer the other way. Here's the chance. Bisson shoots. Great stick save by Ng. The rebound. And it sliced just up over the net. Puck came back to the line. Here is Jakes. He winds. He shoots. It was deflected in front. I don't think Freer may or may not have gotten a piece of it. It went out of play. And whistle will halt action with four and a half gone in the first. And the Comets lead it one nothing. 15 seconds left in the Willett Minor. Adam, yeah, that was a great save by uh, Peter Ring there. You can see Jakes takes the shot there and a big kick save. But there was a bigger save before that on Tom Bissett, who came in from uh, Europe. He had played with us uh, just for a training camp. He had played over there for the last five years, and we're looking for big things from him. But uh, Peter Ring, he's going to be sharp tonight. He's a veteran goaltender. He saw there that they were getting a little scrambly, so he kicked the puck up into about row 20 for a little whistle action. There you go. We're, we're low enough that we might be able to get a puck up this way. <laughs> I get the first one. You get the first one? Yeah. We'll be scrambling for it. I got to <laughs> get back to my kids. Well, by the way. Oh, by the way, yeah. I got to say happy birthday to Garrett Gamble today. He's six years old. My little boy six years old. I know he was a little upset I didn't make it, but uh, happy birthday, Garrett. And happy birthday to Ryan McCrory, Scott McCrory's kid. Here's the drive. I think he's three years old, so three years a lot old. of birthdays going on. And I think the Arrows would like to reward them both for the win. They're down a goal, and they are on the power play, but here comes Fort Wayne. Just offside. And the faceoff will go back to center with 15-23 to go in the first. one nothing Houston Wednesday night. After Babylon 5, a faltering alliance traps the Federation between the Klingons and the crumbling Kardashian Empire. It's on a two-hour season premiere of Star Trek, Deep Space Nine, Wednesday night at 8 on UPN 20. So I guess Wednesday night we're in front of our TV sets. <laughs> Watch a little Star Trek. Deep. Are you one of those Trekkie heads at all? No. No? No, not me. Well, I should be, though. You should be? I should. There's, a, there's a good shot of Colin Chin. And, uh, last year when they had their coaching problems, Colin was hurt. He actually he helped them coach last year. He was an interesting story in the sense that he couldn't coach for the whole game because his knee was so sore. He couldn't stand on the bench, so he went to like about two and a half periods or even two periods, and then he had to go sit upstairs. <laughs> Never could finish a game. His knee was so sore. Now the Arrows shoot the puck back into the Fort Wayne zone. They are offsides. The penalties now over. Teams are at five aside. Arrows trail one to nothing. But I think uh, that power play did them a lot of good. It's got them back into this hockey game. Seems like they got their skating legs back. Well, I... Again, uh, they, Fort Wayne just came out and jumped all over us. Uh, we expected it, but it's hard to tell everyone that, hey, this is how it's going to be. So uh, we're going to battle back, Adam. We battled back all last year. Nothing's uh, going to change. There's a good shot. Jim back there is uh, unbelievable that uh, we can get a guy with two Stanley Cup rings and have him in an Arrows uniform. So we're looking for a lot of positive things from him. Marquis Matthew. We'll take a face off. Uh, that's Marquis' uh, first shift in the IHL. Yes. He played two years in the East Coast. And uh, he, uh, this is, I know he's very, very excited. Uh, it would be great for him to have a great first shift. And I'd like to see him get a goal, Adam. How would that be? For, uh, uh, I'll tell you what. I, I just would like to see the Arrows get more than Fort Wayne tonight. That'd make my, uh, make my night perfect. Make everyone's night, especially for that bus ride back yes. to Indy tonight. About two and a half hours, folks. Back to Indiana, 6 a.m. flight out of Indianapolis. Off the faceoff, arrows control, Jim Pack, right side, Slipchenko, trying to move around, Straub cannot, sends it back, Jake's a bouncing puck, steered it down to Slipchenko, base of the right circle, he's pounded into the boards by Straub, but picked up by Houston. Back to the line, Jim Pack had trouble with the puck, slipped it down behind the net. There is Slipchenko, Matthews there as well, Marquise Matthew trying to dig it out. Matthew in the corner, back to Jim Pack. Trying to find Matthew, grinding it out. It's Slipchenko. Now to Matthew, behind the net. He's worked on by Grant Richardson. Puck lugged out of there by Slipchenko. Wheeling, dealing. Boy, is he a tough guy to corral. Finally, he's pinned along the boards. And it's 
picked up by Matthew. Base in the left circle. They grind it out some more in the corner. This is kind of those little battles you like to look at and see if the arrows win. And finally, they continue to grind it out. Boy, a number 14 sure would be nice in a situation like this, Dave Tippett. Well, yeah, Dave Tippett was great along the boards like that. But Dave's going to give us a lot on the bench tonight. Puck is shot down. It was an icing call, but Dobson didn't know it, and he played it. Thus, no call. Now it's shot down by Houston. This will be an icing call on Houston, and we take time out. 14 minutes to go in the first, one nothing Fort Wayne. This is Saturday Night on Ice. Saturday Night on Ice. It's the big theme this year for UPN 20 and the Houston Arrows. Next broadcast will be from the Summit against the Detroit Vipers, the home opener at 7. Then next Saturday from the Cincinnati Gardens, the Arrows and the Cyclones. And then the 18th, just up the freeway, against the Indianapolis Ice. Fort Wayne leading this hockey game by a score of one to nothing, and a quick shot off the faceoff, just whistled wide. That was by Andy Bezo. Arrows shooting around the boards. Far side, Donnelly trying to clear to the line, not out. Held in at the left point nicely by Sean Cronin. Longtime NHL veteran played last two seasons with the San Jose Sharks. Well, Sean, Sean has all that experience. Uh, he's been in the NHL for many, many years, and he's known for his toughness. That's what they wanted here. Donnelly ripped the puck into the Fort Wayne zone. Icing indicated if Fort Wayne gets there, they do. Kevin Wartman touched, and they'll bring the face off back down into the Houston Arrow zone. I think one thing that we're going to likely, uh, Terry's down on the bench telling the guys, Adam, is that our forwards just need to hold up just for a little more of a second to give our D a little more time. Fort Wayne is pressuring our D immensely right now, and we just want to slow down the comments a little bit. Terry Ryskowski. They don't come any more intense on the bench. Oh, but... look at that face right there now. That's intensity right now. A lot of things <laughs> going through that man's mind. Is it a big help having Tippett on the bench with him? I believe it is. I, you know, he, Dave Tippett is just a class act and, and is so smart about the game of hockey that I think he'll really calm those defense down, and uh, he's a great asset. Off the faceoff, it's Guy Dupuy for Fort Wayne. A chip shot, and it was cleared by the arrow defense. Looked like more, one of my little nine irons along the green. Picked up by Dupuy, shovel it into the arrow zone. It's Gord Donnelly to hustle back and play it. Blasted off the boards, couldn't clear it. Held in by Fort Wayne. Here's the shot. Puck got dumped in there, Adam, and Gord Donnelly got back. He hustled back. He slapped it around the boards. We got a bad break off the boards. It looked like it might have went off Scotty's foot. Took a bad bounce, went right into the slot on the waiting stick of Darren Smith. And there it is, upstairs, top shelf, one-timer, with Paul Willett in front causing all kinds of traffic and happen. Here it is, the pass across, one-time shot, upstairs. Rob Dobson didn't even get a chance to see that puck with Willett. Donnelly in front. That's that's just a tough break off uh, the foot over there and then right on the guy's stick. Yashin made a really nice pass to Darren Smith. And this hockey game now is 2-0 in favor of the Comets. Arrows are offsides with 13-10 to go in this first period. Well, it's going to be time to, to check down there and make sure that uh, everyone's going to be re ready to get going and keep it going here. We can't let this crowd take over here. I know that that coach right there, Dave Ferris, is a pretty happy guy. He looked down on the bench there right now. Is that we got to be saying down there, hey, guys, the game's not over yet. Keep it going, keep it going, keep going forward. Let's get the puck in deep on him. Off the faceoff, it's Rob Murphy, and here come the comments again. It's shot in over the line by Andy Bezo. Back is Arneal. He's drilled by Bezo, and it's picked up by the Arrows. Freer rops to center for Houston. Bring it across the line, but it was tipped away by Straub. O'Connor's going to try and do it. He's muscled. we got a penalty coming up to Fort Wayne. And the Arrows are going to want a power play, but then maybe not as Arneal takes a retaliatory shot at Bezo. And that might do it for the Arrow power play. We'll see. Things are heating up out there right now, Adam. You can see that uh, Scotty's getting a lot more physical. And I'm sure Terry's down there saying, hey, this hasn't been a physical game yet. In order for the Arrows to be successful, we need to be physical. And no penalty to Arneal, so Scotty Arneal, he's that KG veteran, he doesn't make many mistakes. He took a chance there and came up bases. Well, certainly, you know, Scotty's not going to do something that's going to put our team in jeopardy. You know, he knew that uh, he was just playing the puck strong there, and, and uh, Bezio there went flying down. But before that, that's where the penalty was. So the Arrows will go on their first full power play, and the unit of Freer, Bissett, and Arneal come out with Conroy and O'Connor. 
This unit looked tremendous against the Minnesota Moose in the last preseason game. It certainly did. Al Conroy is a forward, a centerman playing back on the point, but he's played that role before. I played with Al 10 years ago, a long time ago, back in junior hockey, and he used to play that point position. The Medicine Hat Tigers. The Medicine Hat Tigers of the old Western League. So yes. uh, we're looking for big things. Al can shoot the puck and make a lot of good plays. Arrows shoot it into the Fort Wayne zone. Colin Chin goes back. He will turn, clear it off the glass. It'll go all the way down the ice, and O'Connor's got to hustle back. Thompson slows for O'Connor, and he'll turn in behind his net. O'Connor from right to left, a pass to Arneal. Turned it over, and Colin Chin's got it. Chin will turn and shoot it back down the ice. 134 remaining. In We're going to have to get a rope on that Colin Chin. He's all over the ice out there right now, Adam. Up the left side, here comes Al Conroy. He'll shoot it to the line, not into the zone deep enough, and it's right back down the ice. 120 remaining in the power play for Houston. Eight minutes gone in the first period. It's 2-0 in favor of Fort Wayne. Conroy near side, belted by Smith. Maurice turned the puck over. Now it's picked up Kevin Meehan. He tries to move it along the boards. And back is Maurice, back behind the net, but Darren Smith has got it. Arrow's really struggling on this power play. They're on the man advantage, and Fort Wayne has owned this particular shift. we got to get a little more communication out there. I got this guy, you got that guy, and then once you get him, you got to stick with him out there, Adam. Under a minute to go in the power play for Houston. They have yet to find the Fort Wayne zone. Conroy shoots it in. It's knocked down by A. Maurice. Had it, lost it. And Guy Dupuy is there. But Maurice is on his case. Near side counts. It belts his hand into the boards. Puck is cleared. Comets have it. And Paul Willett will skate the center and shoot it right back down the ice. Thompson out of the net to slow with 30 seconds to go in the power play. 2-0 Fort Wayne. Arrows need a goal in the worst way right now. Maurice for Houston across the line. Maurice pulling up at the circle, looking in front. It's back to Laniel. He gives to Jake, shoots, hits skates in front, and it's cleared by the Comets all the way down the ice. That's Very almost solid. Gonna, that's almost going to do it for that uh, power play. We just got to get it up to the red line, get it in deep, and get a couple men on the puck. Uh, they're forcing us down low, so we got to keep on pushing that puck up at him. Laniel shoots it in, and it's cleared. Not out. Second effort is finally out. Drew McBain got it clear to center. That's clear to center again. And Rob Murphy's got a chance. He's open left wing. Shoots. Dots in the save and the rebound. He's clear to the far boards. Alex Nikolic in behind the net for McBain. McBain trying to move it in there. Murphy's got it. Murphy for McBain behind the net. Skate to skate with Yelda. Here's a chance for Murphy. Can't pull the trigger. McBain wides, takes the shot. Sean Evans centered it. Here's the drive. Board, still not out of the zone. It's down low. This is a dangerous situation for Houston right now. Into the corner. Nikolic grinding it out with Jakes. They're skate to skate. We're halfway through the first period. Here's a chance for Fort Wayne, but it's tipped away by Slavchenko and shot down the ice. Wow. We need a change right away, Adam. We're tired guys out there right now. We got to get some fresh legs. Now it's Colin Chin who dropped it back. A shot right on. Dobson kicked it out of there. And here comes Gord Donnelly charging across the line with Maurice. Here's a chance in front. He will cover up and hold on. 9.30 to go in the first period. 2-0 Houston. This is Saturday Night on Ice. Fans put October 7th down on your calendar. That's the night your Houston Arrows officially begin their second tour of duty at home. Watch as they take on the Detroit Vipers in a fight to the finish. We'll have an evening full of excitement and surprises on October 7th. Tickets are available. In fact, you can call right now at 627-AERO. Operators are standing by right now. Pick up your phone, 627-AERO. Get your tickets. And Dave Tippett, oh, man, the first full season as an assistant coach. I think he's going to be good for Terry Ruskowski. We talked about this guy knows pro hockey. Well, he certainly does. He's been around the game for all of his life. And He's going to add a calming influence on the bench there. And I just want to comment, Adam, we just had two humongous saves by Rob Dobson there. And now uh, we're back in the offensive zone. And hopefully we can do something with this draw. Face off in the circle to the right side of Peter Ng. And off the face off. Arrows have it. Jim Pack left side. Worked it down. Comets Sean Cronin trying to clear. It's gobbled up by Kevin Meehan and shot to neutral. Here comes Messier. Mitch Messier center right in. Oh, and Sean Cronin who came smoking down the slot. And he couldn't get a shot away. That's an unfamiliar place for Sean Cronin. Usually he's back on that defense. He's never up there. Big shot. Stopped Dobson. Rebound. And Donnelly got in front of a Kevin Meehan.
drive. Here comes Scott McCrory for Jim Pack. Quick pass center ice. Conroy for Houston. Conroy dumped the puck in, and Mitch Messier is back. Yes, the younger brother of Mark Messier, but big difference in playing styles, if you will. Yes, a lot of big difference in playing <laughs> styles and paycheck. I stepped to the plate on that one, eh? Puck came out in front, and Wall was almost kicked into the four-way net by one of their own players. Now it is Conroy in the corner. Plugged it behind the net, cleared by Cronin to the line. Not out, held in right point. Here's a drive by Krupke. It's blocked by Cronin. It goes to the fire circle. Gobbled up by Kevin Wartman. Clear, not out. Cronin can't clear. He's in a battle with McCrory and then shoved right off the puck, but he stays with it. Battle on the boards. The puck is frozen. They continue to grind it out, and finally, whistle stops play with 8.22 to play in the first, 2-0 Houston. I'll tell you what, Sam Malone has taken a big role with the Houston Arrows this year from KRB. Sam, what do you got for me? Hi, I'm Sam Malone from 104 KRBE. You want to go to the Arrows home opener, Sam Malone style? Free! Be the 20th caller right now, 777-5772. Get two tickets, two hats, two t-shirts. It's a hell of a game. It's the Arrows. See ya! Shh. See ya! Sammy, Sammy, what is he doing to us? Well, Looking we, good. You know what, I saw Sammy last week. He's playing in that old hockey league out in Sugar Land, and uh, he's even lacing up the blades now. Yeah, in fact, uh, we're going to have him on a few times this year helping out. Normally, Mike Greenlay and myself, 777-5772, 20th color. Win some tickets. Great deal. Outstanding deal. Look forward to seeing you at the game. If it's free, it's for me. <laughs> Trainer's motto and Troy Gamble's motto. <laughs> off the face off. The Comets have got it. And a 2 0 lead. Yes, in a drive. Wide of the net. Picked up by Thompson. He'll turn to the near side. Arneal trying to clear. Not out. Held into Puy. It came back to the line. It's Darren Smith. Shoots. And a glove save by Rob Thompson. Snatching that from the jaws of the twine with 8.03 left to play in this first period. And the Comets lead it 2 0. Well, that's the type of play there for Rob Dobson that, uh, that we were talking about is that he got to see that puck all the way. The defense took a great slap shot, but Rob had a clean side of it and made a great catching gla uh, glove save. Uh, even a reverse angle. We got all the technology up here in Fort Wayne, Adam. <laughs> and there you go, the big glove save. But you can see no one's in front because our defense is clearing the front of the net. And that's one thing we wanted to address over the summer, and we did with these new defense coming in. Uh, near chance for the Comets, but they can't all be gems. Well, you can. well, that's still a good shot, Adam. He got in uh, 20 feet from the blue line and, and let one rip, but uh, Dauber was up to the task. Off the face off. The arrows have got it. Krupke behind his net. A pass to the right side. Bissett can't clear. Second effort is drilled back in by Fort Wayne. Dobson slows behind the cage. O'Connor trying to clear to Arneal. He slapped it down the ice. After it, Freer. Freer will go down to get it. He's the first one there. Freer trying to center it. He's blasted into the boards by Brian Straub. Behind the net, Bissett fighting for it. Not doing too well against Murphy. Now tries to move it out in front. Straub is there. He can't clear. Arneal grinds it out in the far corner to the left side of Peter Ng. Bissett trying to get it down for Arneal. Straub lumped it out of there. It's cleared to the line, not out. Good defensive play by Krupke. And it's back down into Houston Arrow territory. Icing indicated with 7.19 to go in the first, 2-0 at Fort Wayne. That's one of the matchups I thought that we'd see tonight is uh, Mark Freer and Scotty O'Neill are obviously one of our number one offensive lines. And uh, that's the matchup with uh, Murphy that I was going to see tonight because Murphy's a big, strong centerman, and they're playing them hard tonight. They got McBain, Willett, and Murphy playing against them as a defensive line so that we don't give... Fear and Arnie, those good scoring chances. And that's the, the tough thing about coming into the jungle is that they get last change. And the other, don't kid yourself, you know, you look at the 2 0 lead that Fort Wayne has. This third goal is huge because obviously it'll either be 3 0 Fort Wayne, but if the Arrows get the next goal, they're right back in this game. Give them a little momentum, a little uh, confidence. Is what, a play rate, rate that just happened there is we had Mark Fierski at the length of the ice to beat them to an icing puck, and that's hustle. And that's what we want to see. Face off to the left side of Peter Ng. Drop of the puck. Matthew won it, then lost it. Sean Cronin has it for Fort Wayne in the corner. He's taken in there by Slipchenko. Matthew centered it on it. Just picked away by Kevin Meehan. Meehan for Fort Wayne. He'll skate it up the right wing boards. Got through the check of Mike Yo at center. Meehan across the line. Meehan trying to cut in, and Dauber will have enough of that. He will come out and put a glove on it and hold on with under seven minutes to play in the first two nothing Comets. Well, we want a Dauber. Dauber, that's a tough situation. You got a man coming in there, and it was a little bit of an out man situation, so Dauber just froze the puck. Dauber's looked sharp tonight. He, he really has. Uh, you know, he's given up two goals, but we're talking two goals from golden, golden age. You know, great in front of the net, the one-timer across. I think Dauber's played very well. He's been sharp. He's kicked the puck. 
Let's take a break. 2 0 Fort Wayne. This is Saturday night on ice. Most people would consider playing baseball in the Astrodome with Craig Biggio a rare opportunity. But for the Sunshine Kids, it's an annual event. The Sunshine Kids organization provides a little sunshine to children with cancer. Each season, among other things, the Sunshine Kids challenge Craig and other Astros for a couple of innings. And the memories last forever. Craig won't tell you what all he does for the Sunshine Kids, but the sun on his cap says it all. Craig Biggio, an Astro in action. Don't forget tomorrow at 1 o'clock, the Astros take on the Cubs in the season finale live from Wrigley Field. If the Astros end up in a time for the wild card spot, UPN 20 will carry the game Monday, October 2nd. Carry, check your paper Monday morning four times, and also you will be heard live on our radio flagship station, KPRC, 9.50 a.m. I was watching a little bit of the ball game today, and uh, the Astros hung tough today and won 9-8. Drop of the puck, controlled by Fort Wayne. They grind it out. Miam, top of the slot. Wartman fan on a shot. Penalty coming up to Houston. Delayed call. After the puck for Houston, it's picked up by Marquis Matthew. And we're going to get a holding call on Houston. There's 6.47 to play in the first, and the Comets lead 2-0. Well, we need that uh, penalty kill unit to come up big now again. You know, we're at 6.47 of the first period. We're down two goals. So we need a big kill here. I think uh, that was a holding penalty there, and that's another thing. Uh, if you hold the opposition stick, they're going to call you. And, uh, that's a, a tough break when we're in deep. But oh, there's, uh, well, he's intense down there tonight. I think it'll be like that not only all night, but pretty well for the rest of the season. He's just, I think I like the comment you said. You've got Tippett, kind of the mild-mannered, and Terry Rizkowski, the hard, and speaking of intense, Dave Farish. He's got to be happy with the 2-0 lead, and now his team on the power play. Left side off the draw. Oleg Yashin rolled it down for Paul Willett. The hash marks left wing getting set. Scooped it down for Yashin. Arrows have Pack and Donnelly on the points. Here's a pass down. Low the shot. Dobson got in front and denied him like a stolen bank card. Back comes Yashin. Centered in front. Oh, man. And then Donnelly drills. I mean, literally drills Willett like a black and decker but he's going to pick up a penalty and now the arrows who trail two nothing will be two men down that all started uh, with the great half board work of uh, the winger over there he got it in deep into willett donnelly didn't have any chance uh, but to take him down and uh, he's got to go serve uh, two minutes so we're going to be down five on three congratulations to trisha schmidt she was our 20th caller congratulations and she's going to get some tickets to an arrows hockey game is she coming opening night uh, well there's so. the penalty a little cross check right there but that all started with a great pass by the common player to get willett the puck and uh, donnelly just had to do whatever he could to stop him from taking a shot on uh, rob look for us right now we're playing five on three to play a triangle what i mean by that we're going to give them outside shots, but we're going to be taking any rebound and shooting it down. You won't see the arrows carry much, will you? No. As soon as they get it down the ice. Here's Arneal for Houston, right off the draw. Give it to Krupke. Quick turn, can't clear. Held at a left point by Kevin Wartman. Back over to Sean Evans. Those are two pretty good offensive defensemen. Wartman fakes the shot. Back Evans, right point. Evans played last year with the Milwaukee Admirals. Sends it down right through the skates of Oleg Gash, and Jim Pack will turn. Clear to the line, not out. Arrows have struggled clearing it out of their zone tonight. Back to Evans. Centered, Willett the shot, score! Paul Willett. Dobson, I think, got a stick on it. 3-0 Fort Wayne, a power play goal, and the Arrows still stay short-handed. I don't know, Adam, but that could have went off a foot. It looked like uh, Jimmy Pack was uh, going down to block the shot. It might have went off a skate. It bounced and hit something for sure, and uh, here it goes. The pass goes into the center. The puck just, I don't know, it's, it's tough to tell from that angle if it went off a skate or not. But we're five on three, and they're getting great shots. There he is, top of the circle, pass right into the middle, turn around, quick shot, and it looked like it went off a skate. Might have went off one of our guys' skates here. Mark Laniel, right off the draw, shoots it down into the Fort Wayne zone. Sean Evans goes back to play in behind the net. Evans from left to right. It's 3-0 Fort Wayne, and it goes right to the first key. And you talked about the pace of this game, and it has been all Fort Wayne. It's a drive by me and right on. And Dobson, the glove save, and play halted. Well, uh, yeah, that's a good whistle by Rob, but Rob wanted to play that. They blew it down a little early for him. He wanted to drop it and shoot it all the way down. 
and he has that ability. That's one thing that I tried to work on a little bit over the summer, but I won't be even as half as good as Rob is playing the puck. I, I do want to say one thing that you have worked on, and I say this with all sincerity, Troy, you look unbelievable. You came in and you worked hard. You've lost some weight, a lot of weight. You look terrific, Troy, and uh, I know that's shown up in your playing performance, and uh, I hope you keep up the good work. Well, I think uh, what pushed me, though, was Dauber being in such great shape that uh, I wanted to make sure I could get down and, and be in half as good a shape as himself. Jack Lalane, you are. <laughs> Let's not get too carried away up here. Uh. <laughs> Kevin Meehan, the other way. Cutting behind the net, getting set. Still on the power play to Comets. Kevin Wartman to Evans, the drive. And he partially fanned on that. Freer will go to play. Turn in the corner, picked up by Andrew McBain. 5-11 to go. In this first period, 3-0 Comets. Still on the man advantage. Evans, a drive. Ricocheted off skates and pinballed to Jakes. He fluttered one to the line. Freer still can't clear it. Here comes Wartman. Wartman for Fort Wayne. Pulls up at the circle. Back to the line for Kevin Meehan. Meehan waiting, waiting with a puck back. The drive. And reach is wide of the net. And finally picked up by Arneal. And he will skate it to center. 20 seconds to go in the Fort Wayne power play. Here come the arrows, short-handed, but they are offside. 4.45 to go in the first. It is 3-0 Fort Wayne, and I gotta ask you, Troy Gamble, you suspected this would be a physical hockey game, and really, I think it's been Fort Wayne that's been dishing out more of the hits tonight. Well, I'm sure that will be addressed in the locker room. Uh, in order for us to be successful, we have to be very, very physical, and you are correct about that. I think what we're seeing happening, though, they're gaining the red line. They're getting the puck in deep, and they're forcing us, and you can just look at the shot. It's 11-4 right now, and uh, they're out shooting us and, and out skating us right now. One shot back into the Fort Wayne zone. Ryan Straw, right side to go to he's pounded by Yo. Penalty down to seven seconds. Here is Guy Dupuis for Fort Wayne. Get it out the center for Chin. Tried to get it in there. Yo turned it around, but still can't clear it. Second effort to the line, and out at center ice. Puck goes back into the Houston zone. Penalties over. Teams at five aside. Gord Krupke turns in his own zone. Reversed it over to Yo near side. Yo slammed one to the line. Oh, it is out. I didn't think he got it out, but Strong, they say, didn't hold it in. It is offsides with 4.14 to play in the first and a 3 nothing lead for Fort Wayne. Well, I think that was the delayed offsides. Before that is that uh, what happened is that they didn't all come back over the blue line. So that was a delayed offside, uh, not the real offside. Look here. Oh, yeah. Well, but it did come out. It, it, it never came out that they got in too quick the time before. So the linesman, I looked over at the far corner. I got a great vantage point from here. You can notice his hand was up. Face off at center ice. And the Comets win the draw. Grant Richardson sends one over to Straw. Quick pass Willett goes into the arrow zone. Icing indicated. Pack has to hustle. He didn't get there. No icing. Paul Willett sends it down. There's a chance for... Darren Smith, but it rolled behind the net for Marquis Matthew. Skate to skate with Willett. Now Pack trying to clear it. Came to Yo. Can't get it out. Richardson the drive and a glove save by Dobson. He will hold on with 3.47 to go in this first period. 3-0 Houston. Today when we had our pre-game skate, Adam, the ice was real chippy. If you look at a lot of the bounces tonight, is that the puck is bouncing all over. That's because this ice is chippy up here. That's how Mike didn't get that puck and get it out. Dauber was on the top of his crease and made a good glove save. But before that ever happened, Jimmy Pack got that puck. That should have been icing. Great save. Lots of traffic in front of Rob, but he was on the top of his crease. That should have been blowing icing. I had a great vantage point. Jimmy Pack got that puck. Off the faceoff, it's controlled by Fort Wayne. Kevin Wartman trying to wheel and deal in front. Maurice on his case. It's in the corner for Jakes. Give it to Scott McCrory, and he chipped it up and out of the zone. Andy McBain at center. Sends it right back into the Houston zone. Dobson's there to slow it. And then Bezo came smoking in there, and it had to be turned around by Jakes. Arrows have spent a lot of time in their own end. They have only four shots on goal. They have put absolutely no pressure on the Fort Wayne Comets in this first period as of yet. McCrory trying to clear, cannot. Jakes to McCrory. And here comes Maurice, a chance. Maurice across with Conroy, that is offsides. And it'll come back out to center ice with 3.09 to play in the first. 3 nothing. Comets. Mo had a tough time to get the puck there. It was kind of bobbling on him. He's trying to make the pass to, uh, to Al Conroy. And uh, Al was flying in the middle. It would have been great if he could have got the puck to Al. Terry Raskowski obviously displeased with the effort in this first period. 
Well, I, I don't know if it's, it's so much the effort. It's, it's just that this is a tough building. This scared me having this as our first game of the season coming in here. It's a very, very tough building, and it's easy to get unnerved. The fans are right on top of you here in the, the Coliseum. Off the face, off the arrows have it. Miles O'Connor shoots it in. Back is Dupuy. And behind is that arrows lost 6-3 in this building last year. And I know that, Adam. I was in goal. Didn't mean to bring up an old memory. Or maybe an old nightmare. Old nightmare. Krupke in his own end. He does the job screening his mat off, and Maurice will get it down the ice. No icing, though. They say Fort Wayne could have played it. And Sean Evans will hustle back to play. Evans in his own end. Quick pass for Kevin Meehan. Late last year with the Peoria Riverman. Then caught a little stick from Scott Arneal. Down he went, but Colin Chin brings it back. Chin centered. Oh, it hits skates and went into Dobson. He doesn't see the puck. It's in there. Who wants it? Oh, man. The arrows were so, so close to putting it into their own net. And luckily for Rob Dobson, he had a man back able to clear it. Oh, my. It was like a Mexican jumping beam back in there. It was jumping all over the place, Adam. Icing the call on Fort Wayne. With 2.13 to go in the first period, 3 0 Fort Wayne. It went off about three, three sticks. And here, Colin Shin's going to center it up, and it goes off a, a leg. Hits Dauber right in the chest, bounces down. But Dauber doesn't know where it is right now. He's wondered. It's in him, drops out. Miles O'Connor's there. He's telling him to fall on it, I think. Fall on it, fall on it. Miles does this impersonation of uh, myself just falling down. We end up getting it out anyways. Looked like a rooster sitting on an egg. It just kind of came out. Lucky wide of the net. Darren Smith, who's got a goal in this hockey game, brings the puck in. Smith centered, tipped away by Dobson, and it goes to the line and not in. What right next? I've never seen a puck jump as much as it's been jumping out on that ice. And I, as I said, we, on our pregame skate today, we knew the ice was chippy. That puck is jumping all over the place. Oh. Look at this puck jump here now. Goes up in the air, it's jumping. Dauber has great presence of mind to know that he didn't have it in his glove to reach in behind him. Uh, and off another leg. And he, as you can see, they are driving so hard to the net tonight that there's just tons of traffic and a great save right there. Do you guys work on the way that you fall and turn around so that you don't kick it into your own net? Is there a technique or is it just instinct? Uh, it's usually just instinct. <laughs> oh, good instinct by uh, Dauber. Well, he does have that. Darren Smith, as we said, a goal in the hockey game. Teammate Paul Willett trying to win the draw. Cannot, and it's controlled by the arrows. Here's Jim Pack in behind his net. Quick pass right side for Gord Donnelly. Chipped it to the line, not out. Second effort, finally out to center. It's shot back into the Houston zone, and Pack will hustle back to play it. Pack off the boards. It came out at center, and the arrows make that the Comets that have to go back. Richardson with a minute and a half to go. Ooh, lost it. It's crashed and burned, and they're going to call a penalty. I didn't see this. Interference coming up. Well, as long as we're going on the power play, uh, I guess he had a better look at it, Adam. We didn't see it up here. <laughs> Mark Freer went down. He was interfered with. And Freer, as he knows, that his team is going to be on a power play for the remaining 135 of this period and then 25 seconds to start the second, pending the Euros don't score. And I got to tell you, Troy, I think a goal here before the period comes up, that's got to do wonders for the Euros. Well, it'll do wonders for the Euros. It might calm Terry down a little bit going into that locker room. I don't know if I'd want to be in there down 3 nothing. Uh, 20 minutes into a game, so uh, hopefully we can come out. It looks like we're going to have Graham Townsend out there cause traffic in front, Slavchenko and uh, Mike Maurice. So we're going to push the puck at the net on this power play with Steve Jakes uh, shooting with uh, Mark Laniel. Face off to the right of Peter Ring. We haven't called his name hardly at all tonight. Well, we're out shot 14 to 4, but it's the quality of shots that Rob Dobson has faced that's the telling story. Mark Laniel. Base of the right circle. Give it over to Maurice. Sticks it back to the line for Slipchenko. Wide. Shoot. Right on. Sticks in. In the rebound. And a backhander by Maurice goes wide. Jake's held it in. Get it down low. Townsend reversed it to Maurice behind the cage. He's blasted by Dupuy. And it's cleared by Sean Cronin all the way back into the arrow zone. Laniel hustled back into his own zone. Four checked by Colin Chin. Rolled a pass to Jake's. We're down to a minute four in the period. Slivchenko for Houston across the line, flying right in, and a blocker save made by Ng. Arrows, a good chance there. Andy McBain had it kicked away. Townsend works in the corner, but coming away with a puck is McBain. 48 to go in the period, 3-0 Fort Wayne, a minute 11 left in the power play for the Comets. 
McVay hustling down the right side. He and Laniel go skate to skate. Jake's trying to come away with it. Jake's will skate it up and out of his zone, looking for Maurice. It was jammed away by Rob Murphy. Half a minute to go here in the first period. Laniel, get it up to Jim Pack. Quick pass for Tom Bissett. He'll hit the line with Arneal and shoot the puck in. 20 seconds in the period. Fear left side. Behind the net for Bissett. He has Arneal in front. Can't get it to him. Bissett waiting. Base in the left circle as he crosses up with Freer. Bissett down Freer. Cutting in. Centered. Knocked away. I think Ng got a piece of that. And it's Kevin Meehan. He'll clear to the line. Pack held it in. Left point. Pack lobbed it, or lodged it down low. And Richardson shoots it down. And that will be an unbelievable first period for the Fort Wayne Comets. A terrific first period of action. Well, it was. It seemed like they had a lot more jump than we did. They were a little more physical, and they got the puck deep, and they made some good plays at him. Uh, you know, when you make plays like that, it's going to be very tough for Rob Dobson to keep on making great saves all night. All right, it is 3-0. The Fort Wayne Comets lead it, and we'll have more from Allen County War Memorial right after this. This is UPN Saturday Night on Ice. Welcome back to the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum, home of the Fort Wayne Comets, and right now home to a 3-0 Comet lead and a tremendous first period for the Fort Wayne Comets. For the Houston Arrows and really for a lot of teams in the IHL, this is a time where players are trying to make the extra spaces, make the squad of their uh, prospective team, and our Barry Warner had a chance to look at the Arrows cutting process. Last year, the process of assembling the Arrow roster was a matter of trying various combinations during training camp and the exhibition season, hoping to try to find the right mix. But with a solid core of talent, Director of Player Personnel Pete Deneen's task this year was not as much of a guessing game. Usually after every day we have an evaluation and go over all the, uh, all the players and, and kind of evaluate it like that. And usually after day four or five, you have a pretty good idea of, uh, of who's going to be around. For coach Terry Ruskowski, it's simply a matter of letting each and every player know what he expects from the men who hope to wear the arrow sweater for year number two. And I told them, I said, the guys that worked hard in practice and, and doing the drills right and doing the scrimmage right and hard, they'll be the guys that are going to be on the, uh, on the ice playing. And if the guys aren't going to work hard, they'll be in the stands watching. And that's just exactly how I'm going to do it. Uh, we're here to win hockey games. I said this last year and I said this year. You have arguments, you and Pete, and then Scott O'Neill, and now Dave Tippett, as far as what the fate of a certain player will be? We don't try to argue and try to out outmind each other and outrank uh, each other. We sit down, we have a good conversation, and, and we always keep everybody's conversation in, in mind when we make our decision, and, and we do it after that. And it's kind of a uh, four, on, uh, four uh, minds together to big one. One of last year's stars, veteran winger Dave Tippett has retired as a player and is now a full-time assistant coach. Just how does he deal with the prospect of voting thumbs down on a former teammate? We try to take the personal side out of it, but obviously there's a lot of friendships uh, involved, and, and there's a lot of other things other than just hockey. There's families, there's children involved, so it's a very difficult thing, but uh, that's something you kind of have to take on in the pro sports business, and you're paid to put the best product you can on the ice, and, uh, and you have to keep that in mind when, when you're making those decisions. It makes no difference what sport you're talking about. Baseball with a 25-man roster, the world champion Rockets where Rudy T has a dozen men, or ice hockey. One thing is certain, it's tough firing a competitor. Actually, it's real tough. It's probably the worst part of the job, actually. And, uh, you know, young kids have been working out all summer to get prepared for uh, IHL hockey camp. And, uh, you know, they... Uh, you know, we try and uh, fit them into the East Coast Hockey League or Central League or, or a tryout with another international hockey league team, but it, it's real tough. Deneen's job is never-ending. With injuries, trades, and acquisitions, the chemistry of a roster is a never-ending work in progress. For Pete Deneen, Terry Ruskowski, and the staff, they've got their eye on the reward, the Turner Cup. Thank you, Barry. It is 3-0 in favor of the Fort Wayne Comets, and we'll look at the scoring from that first period. When we return, this is UPN Saturday Night on Ice. Welcome back to Fort Wayne, Indiana. Adam Gordon along with Troy Gamble. It's a 3-0 hockey game in favor of the Fort Wayne Comets. Sure, the result that the Arrows don't want. I thought maybe the big thing, the Arrows really had trouble getting the puck out of their end. Well, we really did, Adam. And uh, as I said in the pregame skate, we knew the ice was chipping and things are bouncy. 
but you just got to be more sure on the boards. If you can't get it out, you got to hold it and hopefully get a whistle, and I'm sure Terry's down there telling them that. And that led to three Fort Wayne goals, and we'll take a look at that scoring summary. The Arrows gave up the first goal to Colin Chin at 40 seconds into the hockey game. Mitch Messier and Kevin Meehan getting the assist. It was quickly 2-0 Fort Wayne when they came right back. Darren Smith, 6.43 the time of the goal. Oleg Yashin getting the assist. And then the third goal for Fort Wayne belonged to Paul Willett at 13.59. A power play goal was on a two-man advantage. Kevin Wartman and Kevin, or Sean Evans, rather, getting the assist. You know, the Houston Arrows, with, with all that's going on in sports and looking for positive things to say about sports and the high salaries, the Arrows have always shown that they are a pride of the Houston community. And let's pause just a moment for Dan Patrick. Throughout the season, I'll be taking a moment or two throughout the uh, Arrows telecast here on Channel 20 to talk about something positive in sports in our community. Let's face it, the media, and I'm part of that media, and the public in general tend to dwell on the negative. The fact is there are many good stories, more than negative stories. We just don't pay attention to those. And that's what we're going to do here throughout the hockey season. Tonight, I thought it would be proper to talk about a great news story, last year's Houston Arrows and what the future holds. You know, last year the Arrows gave us kind of the old feeling for sports that we used to have for all teams. The owners really seemed like they cared about you, the fans. They marketed a product and they provided entertainment here on television and live at the Summit every night. The players, they really appreciated you coming out and supporting them. They didn't mind signing an extra autograph, posing for a picture, and they always gave 100% on the ice. And let's face it, with average ticket prices about 10 bucks and average salaries about 60000 Fans can relate to that. It was an old-fashioned love affair last year between the fans in Houston and the Arrows hockey team. Now, 1995 brings us new expectations for the team and for the fans. Let's hope that the Arrows continue to show they appreciate your support. I'm sure they'll work hard to do that. And let's hope the fans in town are loyal to the Arrows live at the Summit on KPRC Radio and here on Channel 20. And maybe this is a team and this is a time that we can all have fun in 95 and in the future, just focusing on the game having fun like it used to be in all sports. Thinking positive, I'm Dan Patrick. Thank you, Danny. Dan Patrick from KPRC, and that's Positively Patrick. It's Positively 3-0 Fort Wayne. We'll have more from Allen County War Memorial right after this. Back inside the Allen County War Memorial, Adam Gordon, Troy Gamble, 3 0 in for favor of the Fort Wayne Comets. One might think, gee, the goaltending struggling. I thought Rob Dobson played a whale of a period. I thought he did also, Adam. It's just that they're getting shots right from point blank range, and they have a lot of traffic in front of the net, so it's making it tough on uh, Rob. And they come out into this period here. They, I think Terry Ruskowski, not as much him, it's just the players have to give themselves a little mental gut check and say, hey, we've got to come out here. They're only down 3 nothing, and there's still two periods to play. A lot of hockey left to play. And the one thing that I noticed that we didn't do that well up here, we didn't keep our feet moving. We seem to be a little slow out there, a little tentative. We got to take the initiative. We can't wait to, for something to happen. We got to take it to them, Adam. And you look at the first goal as we take a look at the highlights, and it was Colin Chin right off the bat, 40 seconds. Great shot, top shelf, blocker side. He got left alone there for a minute and uh, puts it in the net. And he got a goal from Darren Smith later, but then another goal from Paul Willett. Well, Paul Willett turns around here and takes a shot right away. It might go off a foot. We're not quite sure. And go, ends up sneaking by Rob Dobson. I think that was the third goal also. Taking a look at the stats in the first period, uh, shots 14-6 definitely show dominance by the Comets in that first period. 11 saves for Dobson, 6 for Peter Ng. 0 for 6 uh, penalties, power plays are 0 for 3. We'll bring you the second period when we return. This is Saturday Night on Ice. Adam Gordon, Troy Gamble. We're ready for second period action. One thing we kind of neglected to mention, the Arrows do have about a half minute to work on a power play here and maybe get themselves into this hockey game. And most times what happens, Adam, uh, we had that break right there, is that we devise a plan right from the faceoff to get it in deep and to work a play. We know we have 26 seconds on the uh, power play here, so we want to work something fairly quickly, and a lot of times you work it right off the draw. And Dave Farish, I'm sure, telling his hockey club, I'm not going to sit back at a 3-0 lead, and you kind of, for those of you watching on UPN 20, you see Dave Farish, but to his right is Derek Ray, who was born in Seattle, Washington. He's been a long-time Fort Wayne Comet. Long-time Fort Wayne Comet, and also uh, coached here last year when they had the upheaval here of, uh, of some bad times. Uh, but Dave Farish, they wanted him to come in and, and bring in a new work ethic. And uh, from the site of the first period, I guess his work ethic has uh, really worn off. Absolutely. 
We're set to go. Arrows defend the goal to our left. Comets the goal to our right. Drop of the puck. We're underway with a second period. O'Connor stumbling at center. Ryan Straub will escort it into the arrow zone, but kicked away by Tom Bissett. Freer to the left side for Arneal. Had it tipped away. And it's Brian Straub who plangs it off the glass. It's at center. Conroy, 10 seconds on the power play for Arneal. Across the line. Arneal waiting, waiting at the hash marks. Left side, back to the line. It's Conroy. Conroy back down for Tom Bissett. Power play now over. Teams at five aside. Freer turning in front center. O'Connor that snuck in. Well, that's the scouting report on Peter Ng. You got to go upstairs. He's going to take that bottom of the ice always away from you. O'Connor a drive, and that just goes sizzling wide of the cage. It came back down low. Arrows have come out flying. Arneal sends one in there. It was knocked away, and Kevin Meehan is there for the Fort Wayne Comets. He'll skate it up and out of his zone. Meehan to center. With a minute gone in the second period, Arrows trail 3 0, but just about got on the board. Miam again, sidesteps an Arneal check, brings the puck in, shoots, and a stick save made by Dobson. It's clear to the line, not out, held in Dupuis. For Miam, into the far side, at the hash mark. So O'Connor trying to stay with him, stride for stride. Colin Chin, center to hit the side of the net. And O'Connor, he's muscled off the puck by Miam. Into the corner, near side, in there. The arrow's trying to move it along the boards. Freer was in there, and we got a whistle to stop play with a minute and a half gone in the second period. 3 0 Fort Wayne, but a moment ago, Peter Ng standing on his lips to make a great save. Well, Peter Ng, the scouting report is he's going to take the bottom of the net away. Look at that great pass, and boom, couldn't go upstairs. He was in tight, but Peter Ng got across very quickly and uh, did make that great save. Terry Roskowski, the head coach of the Arrows, always talks about baby steps when trying to bring something back. And I think after the dismal first period that the Arrows had, at least that's a positive sign. Some signs of offensive life, some signs of skating. Sure, you got to take anything that you can get right now. That wasn't a great first period. So now you have to go back and start all over. Say, hey, that period's gone. Let's come out, play Arrows hockey now, and see if we can win it in 40 minutes. Face off to the right side of Dobson, Marquis Matthew. And the circle against Paul Willett, he will be tossed, and here's Scott McCrory as we talked about his son Ryan, three years of age. Not matching, unfortunately, the deficit that the Arrows are in right now. Yo, left side, trying to get it out of a scrum. In there was Matthew as well for the Arrows. It's lugged along the boards, and back is Laniel. Laniel, reverse to Jakes, get it to McCrory, and he'll spank one to center. Here comes Yo, trying to get a pass. Matthew overskated it, and it was tipped away by the Fort Wayne defense. Kevin Wartman, clear to the line, not out. Here's the chance, the shot. McCrory had a marvelous chance on the short side, and he missed that. Back to the line, Jakes drills it down to McCrory. Base of the right circle, McCrory, give it to Yo. Arrows look good here in the first two minutes or so. Yo, cutting in, shooting, stick save, rebound, and it's picked up McCrory, shoots. He scores, Scott McCrory. Wow, and the Arrows with their hard work get on the board, and it's a 3-1 hockey game. What a great play by Scott McCrory. He had just missed a great chance before that, and he uh, stuck with it. Here we go, he gets, he wheels around, and he shoots back to the short side. Tough save for a goaltender, but that's just the great patience of Scott McCrory. We're gonna get another look here. There, he's patient, he could have shot right there, he doesn't, takes that extra second, boom, goes back to where he was. What a great play. And the Arrows have come out here. Let's not forget, the Arrows were down, I think it was four goals in Houston last year and came back to win that hockey game. Well, you can be down, but this team will never ever be out. We're a no. fighting team, we are that. 3-1 Fort Wayne, two and a half gone in the second period. And at 2.16, the Arrows got on the board. Conroy can't find a pass. It goes all the way down the ice. Icing indicated, and back to play it is Grant Richardson. And he'll bring a faceoff back into the Houston Arrows zone. See if that gives the Arrows a little jump. Well, we've shown a lot of jump, and uh, I expected that coming out of the locker room. I'm sure there was a, a fiery speech from Terry down there, and uh, I know that uh, he, he wants everyone to pick up their play in order us to come back and win this game. Everyone, not just Rob, not just the defense, not just the forwards. Collectively, everyone together has to play better and, and come out firing on all cylinders. Conroy, face off to the right side of Dobson. But the Comets win the draw, and Thompson down, making another. Another save, and another one trickled and scored. Dobson had the save and rolled up and over him, and disaster has struck as the arrows looked like they were going to get back into this thing, and it's now 4-1 Fort Wayne. Well, they, they, 
they got the draw there and they took the shot on Rob. It was a low shot. He went down, blocked the shot, and the rebound somehow got shot back at him. And I don't know if it went short side or not. Andrew McVeigh took the initial shot. And then number 13 took the shot. And it looked like it almost handcuffed or uh, caught Rob back there a little bit. I'm not quite sure how that one snuck in. 2.37, the time of the goal. And then Colin Chin is belted into next Friday by Jim Pack. Had his head down, and Pack just did that. Packed him whole. Here comes Slipchenko the other way. Slivy, right side, trying to bring it right back. Center, knocked away by Evans. Slipchenko, base of the circle. Slipchenko moving in, sends one down. Conroy waiting, waiting, still in the puck. Sends Slipchenko one time, and he fanned partially on it. And Colin Chin will clear it down the ice. Great try by Slivy there to get that one-timer away, and that was a great pass from uh, Al Conroy to get across. 16.47 to go in the second period, a 4-1 hockey game, and I will say this about Rob Dobson. I remember a game last year where he kind of struggled, gave up a soft goal against the Phoenix Roadrunners. He looked over at Terry, gave Terry a look, and nobody scored on him for the rest of the night. And uh, after a, a reasonably soft goal there from Dobson, I think you're going to see him really be tough to beat from here on in. Well, that's a tough play, though, Adam, because they got the initial shot, and then the rebound was sitting there, and uh, I'm not quite sure how it handcuffed him, but the guy shot it fairly quickly on Rob, and uh, I know Rob, he, uh, he always battles whether it's a good or a bad goal. He's going to be in there battling. Krupke hammer to drive, high and wide of the net. It's picked up by the Comets, cleared to the line, not out, held in by Krupke, and it's picked up by the Fort Wayne Comets. Oleg Yashin across the line. Yashin lost the puck, and we've got a whistle, and we've got a penalty coming up to the Houston Arrows. It's 4-1 in favor of the Fort Wayne Comets, and we'll bring you the power play when we return. This is Saturday Night on Ice. We've got three and a half, played in the second period. Two minutes up on the board to Krupke, and the Arrows, who just gave up a goal to Andy Bezo, now have to try and watch themselves here on a short-handed situation. Drop of the puck, Comets have it. Kevin Wortman along the left wing boards to Oleg Yashin. Give it to Will, and it was tipped away by Freer, not out. Wortman reversed it back to the near side, Oleg Yashin. Yashin waiting, top of the slot, Evans a drive, and that was hammered wide of the net. Will it in the corner, he's hit by Laniel. Comets still have it. Yashin at the hash mark, shoots, scores! Wow, what a bullet. Yashin got to the top of circles, wheeled off, and just blew a blistering drive. Short side, top shelf. Looked like it might have went off Rob's block, I'm not quite sure, but he ripped that puck. That's one thing that the Russians never ever get enough credit for about shooting the puck. They got great shots. Here he wheels and blisters a blast right from the face-off circle right to the top shelf. 5-1 Fort Wayne. And this has got to be tough for Houston. Coming back and that big drive by Ashton in the circle. And the Arrows are down by four after getting the first goal of this period. It looks like they had signs of life. Now a chance for Bezo. First one into the zone. Bezo center. It went all the way back to center ice and Richardson is there. Dobson in behind the net. He'll leave the puck for Jimmy Pack. Four minutes played in the second. Comets with a four-goal lead. Marquis Matthew across the Comet line. It goes down low, but Brian Straub is there. Straub steers one to center, and it goes into the arrow territory. In after it, Bezo. Bezo's running to the boards, and Rob Murphy trying to lug it along there, but Mike Yo turns for Houston, cleared it out at center ice. Richardson back, four check by McCrory. Comets making changes on the fly as Bezo brings the puck in. He got by Donnelly, came in, and Dobson will cover up and hold on. Crowd wanting a penalty, and they will not get it. Let's go downstairs. Mike Greenlee standing by. Mike, what do you got? How you doing, Adam? Uh, like the attitude down on the bench here. Everyone's trying to keep upbeat. Everyone's trying to do their jobs. One of the things, uh, one of the things that the guys uh, touched on in between periods was uh, was uh, taking taking the body a lot more and also uh, being tougher along the wall, getting the puck out of their own zone. Because uh, the the forecheck for Comets is, is so tough right now that it's, uh, it's pretty tough to get the puck out of the zone and uh, start the, the transition game. They got to get that transition game moving a little more. Thank you, Mike. Five one in favor of the Fort Wayne Comets. That's a good point. Yeah, that, that's exactly. And I thought Terry would have been saying something to that sort that we got to get the puck out. Here's a turnover in front, and it was just steered wide as Mitch Messier was looking in there. Slipchenko trying to clear, cannot. Messier waiting, shooting, and a right pad save made by Dobson. 
It's cleared by Krupke, but not out. Miam in the corners, but Conroy came back. He'll flip it over to Maurice, and it's chipped to the line and out at center. Five minutes gone in the second period. A 5-1 lead in favor of Fort Wayne. Those are the plays that we want. Mike Maurice just did a little chip and got it out of our zone. Oh, Conroy nearly took one away, but the Comets able to clear it. We're at five on five hockey. Cronin for Fort Wayne. Steers went back to the left side. Krupke lobbed it into the Fort Wayne zone. Back to play it is Wartman. That is icing and play halted with 14.39 to go in the second period. And Comets lead 5-1. Well, we just got to keep being positive. You know, uh, the guys down on the bench, I know that they never, ever let down and quit. And you can likely see number 19, Vadim Slipchenko out there a little more because we're going to have to get some off if we're gonna have to get any chance to win this game and that's what he offers us he offers us a lot of speed a great shot there you go back to the Russian shooting the puck Oleg for them had that great shot Slivy can shoot the puck just as well and we're gonna need him to take a few of those shots at him face off in the circle to the right side of Rob Dobson Paul Willett with Oleg Yash and Darren Smith and the arrows win the draw Mark Laniel in behind his net quick pass to Arneal knocked away as soon as an arrow gets a puck, it seems like a Comet is all over them. Finally, the arrows shoot it down the ice. The Comets are really skating well tonight. They're really keeping their feet driving hard all night. Dupuy to Darren Smith, and it goes back to center, and the arrows retreat. Mark Laniel, forechecked by Yashin, got it to center. Arneal kicked it to Freer. He was spun off the puck, and it's Fort Wayne regrouping. Oleg Yashin, who just got the Comets' fifth goal. Sean Evans drilled it into Houston territory. Turned around by Laniel. Laniel will sweep near side Slipchenko, and now it is Mark Freer. Shoots it into the Fort Wayne zone. In after it, it is Scott Arneal trying to center it, just missing Freer. It was behind him, and Yashin will turn. Quick pass to center. Evans across the arrow line. Shoots, and a left hand save made by Dobson. Got a toe on it. Tom Bisson, right wing boards. Shoots it into the Fort Wayne zone. Richardson, he will hustle back to play it and turn it up the right side. Quick pass. Oh, almost intercepted by Matthew. It's brought back in, though. Here's Nikolic. Dropped it. Straw right in. Score! It is Rob Murphy. And it's now 6-1 Fort Wayne. No chance for Rob Dobson on that. Just an outnumbered situation coming at us. Straw made a great play, put his head down, made the pass to Rob Murphy. Rob Murphy put it in, in the empty net for a one-timer. Just a great play by Straub. Uh, you know, Rob took Straub, took the shot, but he passed it across for the empty net. He made the diving try here. Straub drives in, makes the pass across for the one-timer, and just no chance uh, for any save of any kind. Fort Wayne wins the draw. Richardson pushed one ahead, and... Murphy will put it into the arrow zone. Gord Donnelly in behind the net. Watched by McBain. Clear it up the fireboards, not out. And it's picked up by Jim Pack. Pack will skate it up and out of his zone. Jimmy Pack through neutral ice, shoots the puck in. Icing indicated if the Comets get back, they will get there. They will. I thought McCrory got there, but they say no. It is icing, and let's take time out. 6-1, Fort Wayne. This is Saturday night. Be a part of the excitement on and off the ice. Join the Houston Arrows Tail Gunners Booster Club. Don't miss out on all the fun. For more information, call the Houston Arrows Charities Department at 621-2842. And I'm sure you're sitting there going, when is opening night? It's October 7th. And if you want to get tickets, you can call right now. There are people standing by in the Arrows office, 627-A-E-R-O. It's going to be wild against the Detroit Vipers. The home opener. The Arrows have one more road game before that comes, and that is against the Cleveland Lumberjacks in Gundarina. Puck came out in front, and Dobson, a stellar save in front. Well, Colin Chin tried to make it 7-1. It's Kevin Meehan in behind the net, watched by O'Connor. Conroy working Chin over pretty good along the boards. And we get the puck in behind the net. Krupke kicked it loose. And Maurice will turn and shovel it to the line. Not out. Kevin Meehan held it in. Meehan right side, steered it down, just missing Messier. Behind the net, it's Krupke. And it tipped away. Back is Messier. Centered. Nobody home for Fort Wayne. And Maurice will skate it up and out of his own. 12.25 to go in the second period. 6-1. The Comets lead it. Across the line, it's Conroy. Fakes the shot. Then lost the puck. It's cleared by Fort Wayne, but not out. Meehan steers right around Conroy and gets it out the center. Here 
from the Comets, two on two. It's Messier with Willett. Messier trying to sidestep the check of O'Connor. Not going to happen, and Jakes will turn it around. Jakes, a long lead pass. Slipchenko barreling down, but Peter Ng comes out of the net, and he'll reverse it behind. After it, it's Conroy at the hash marks, trying to center it. Went off the skates of Willett. It came back to the line. Laniel wide, shoots. Stick save made by Ng, and Conroy is there in the corner with Guy Dupuis for Fort Wayne. It's pushed away, Slipchenko. In behind the ink comes out, and then he is belted by Maurice, but play goes on. It's shot down the ice, icing indicated, and Laniel goes back to touch, and whistle stops play. You know what? We need to give away some more tickets. Let's go say hi to Sam Malone. Sammy. Hey, how you doing? I'm Sam Malone from 104 KRBE. Want to go to the Arrows home opener? Call 777-5772. Be the 20th caller right now. Not only do you get two tickets, you get this look. Arrows jersey, Sam Malone style, free! By the way, when you get it, it'll be autographed. Call 777-5772, 20th caller. See ya! Sammy, where's my telephone? I want to call. I got to get a jersey. I don't even have one. I hey, tell you, I wouldn't mind one of those autographed jerseys. 777-5772, 20th caller. Tickets and a jersey. It doesn't get any better than that. If it's free, it's for us. That's right. That doesn't rhyme. <laughs> Mark Vanille. Now we're going to get a fight. Jakes is going to go with Andy Bezo. They square off. Jakes has him in a headlock. Jakes trying to wrestle him down to the ice. And then an overhand right by Bezo, not there. And then Jakes takes him down. And really, that was more of a wrestling match than anything. But I think at this point, Steve Jakes said, hey, I got to get something positive for my hockey club at this point. Well, sure, Steve Jakes is that type of a team guy that it, he knows things aren't going well, and if he can drop the gloves with someone that wants to drop the gloves, and obviously if Brizo wanted to, uh, that's fine. You know, as I try to come up with an analogy of Steve Jakes, he's like Superman. Clark Kent, when he's on the ice, he's like Superman. And we'll talk more about that when we return. It's 6-1. Fort Wayne, this is UPM Saturday Night on Ice. Saturday Night on Ice continues for UPN 20 and the Houston Arrows, and of course, the radio station KPRC, the 7th of October, the home opener against the Detroit Vipers, then Saturday the 14th against the Cincinnati Cyclones in Cincinnati, and then the Indianapolis Ice Wednesday, the 18th, right at Market Square Arena. And, of course, when we return for the Viper game on the 7th, Mike Greenlay will hopefully be back up here, and I don't say that in any disrespect, but, Troy, I'd like to see you back there in the old sweater. Sure you don't. <laughs> I know you, Adam. No, uh, yeah, I, I, I'll be back by then. Uh, whether I'll be playing or back up, uh, we'll have to wait and see. But, uh, you know, I, I, I'm glad that uh, Mike uh, came in tonight. And I know it's tough for him that he wanted to be up here tonight. And I want to be on the bench. Uh, just a little bit of a role reversal for one game, hopefully. want to congratulate Rick Freeman, winner of the tickets and the jersey. Rick, I thought I was going to announce that. Well, oh, I didn't know you were. Oh, <laughs> hey, I'm, I've taken all your spotlight away, Troy. Uh, <laughs> that's okay, Adam. Oh, enjoy it while it lasts, pal. Here come the Comets in their own end. Straub cleared, and then Will, it is drilled by Gord Donnelly. Imprinted him like a credit card into the near boards, and here comes Mark Freer turning at his own blue line. Freer at center, lobbed it into the Fort Wayne zone. Back go the Comets. It, oh, it came out in front, but nobody for Houston to jump on it. Puck loose between the circles. It came to neutral. Will it across the line? Will it dropped it back for Yashin? Oh, like Yashin at left point, the shot. Oh, what a save by Gabson. Getting down in front, and he will hold on. A terrific save by Rob Dobson. That certainly was, because Yashin just threw it at the net. Dauber got down in that half butterfly, took away all the bottom of the net, but it also got whacked at and deflected by the forward in front. And the one thing I've noticed tonight, Adam, is we've just given up a lot of shots from the point. And uh, they've tried to clear the net as best as they can for Rob, but it's tough when you're fighting off uh, 200 to 210 pound guys in front of you all night. We gotta get, we gotta get those shots from the points eliminated a little bit more. Face off in the circle to the right side of Rob Thompson. Kevin Meehan to take the draw against Vadim Slipchenko. Or make that Marquis Matthew. The shot by Cronin just goes wide. Look like a 19, not a 12. Here's 12, Matthew. Matthew stops at center, turns one over to the near side for Miles O'Connor. He will hoist it into the air, and it hooks back to Wartman. Played last year with the Kansas City Blades, was part of the Turner Cup team that lost four straight as the puck goes up and out of play. Team lost four straight to the Denver Grizzlies, but uh, I'll tell you, the Kansas City Blades and Kevin Wartman, uh, they put on a pretty tough battle considering they lost a lot of key guys. And 
one of the key guys for the arrows is Scott McCrory as he's got a goal in tonight's game. Well, Scott made a great goal there, and uh, the thing that was really good about it is that before he scored that goal, he had a great chance, tried to make a great play. The puck jumped over his stick, and he kind of fanned on it, but he still kept himself positive, stayed in good position, got the puck back, wheeled around, took that extra second and put it back short side. And, uh, that's the experience of uh, Scott McCrory is going to add to you. Well, we're looking for big things from Scott this year. We really are, Adam. Had a very good preseason and uh, played well with Mike Maurice, I thought, when they were playing together in the preseason. Well, I'm sure we'll see those two together. Yeah, Mike Maurice led us in preseason scoring with four points in three games. Maurice against Chen, or uh, Matthew against Chen, and Marquise Matthew wins the draw, but it goes all the way back into the arrow zone. It is Miles O'Connor, one of the four new defensemen on the arrow blue line. But they have been taxed tonight for six goals. Here come the Comets. Puck tipped away. Back to the line. A shot by Wartman. Whistled wide of the net. Messier trying to center it. It's chipped behind the cage. A puck came out in front. And Dobson, who looked like he lost his stick, will cover up and hold on. Well, Dauber just wanted to get a whistle there. He had lost his stick, and uh, he just covered it. He, meant, he also reminded me of a goaltender named Don. Dominic Classic. It's time for the Pizza Hut save comparison. Rob Dobson has made four saves. Peter Ng, 21. I don't think that's right. Those no, need no. to be reversed. Yeah, that should be opposite. I, that, that save comparison is a, a little wrong tonight. Dauber, Dauber's made, I would say, 15 quality saves, and we've only had about three quality shots on Peter Ng. That's more like it. Now it's picked up by Conroy, and he'll bring it into the Fort Wayne zone. Center! And that shot by Slipchenko tipped away. Fort Wayne jumps on a key to play it past the center. And it shot back into the arrow zone. Krupke is there. Krupke turned it to Conroy. Banks it off the boards to Slipchenko. And here come the arrows left to right. Laniel steers it into Fort Wayne territory. After it, Maurice. It's golfed by the Comets. Came to the line, not out. Second effort is out. And it's a foot race. Donnelly's got to hustle back as Rob Murphy comes in. Murphy getting set. Here's the drive by McBain with a big nine iron that went high and wide of the net. Now Conroy getting into it behind. Is he going to go? Is he going to go? He's getting into it with Alex Nikolic. I don't think Nikolic wants any part of him. Conroy says, anytime you want to dance, I'll give you the two-step. But he says, hey, I don't know the Texas two-step. And Conroy says, fine. Enough said. Well, Conroy tonight, a lot of people don't know it, is that he is playing injured tonight. He's got a bad, he's got a bad leg. And you look at him in here, he's still banging around down there. Now's one of the toughest, littlest competitors you're ever going to play against. He's one of those guys that you always love to have on your team, but you hate to play against. And uh, he banged his leg in practice. And uh, they were really scared that he might even have missed this home o this opener uh, on the road tonight. But uh, being the performer he is, he wasn't going to miss it for nothing, Adam. Jerry Ruskowski and the Arrows down by five. And an extra two minutes coming up to Al Conroy. Oh, no, excuse me, coincidental. All right, that's right. Yeah, that's more like it. That was coincidental. It almost looked like they were, uh, I was down on Westheimer there when they washed your uh, windshield. They were washing each other's faces with their gloves. <laughs> Somebody go give Conroy a couple of bucks. Yeah, give him a couple of bucks over there in the belly box. <laughs> 9.19 to go. 6 1 Fort Wayne. Face off to the right of Rob Dobson. Paul Willett against Freer, and Freer wins the draw. Picked up by Pack. He'll skate it up and out of his zone. Turn a pass to the near side for Freer. Across the line with Arneal. Freer trying to make the move. We've got four on four on the ice right now. Pack comes pinching down the left side. Richardson had him tied up for Fort Wayne. Puck picked up by Yash and lost an edge. Crashed and burned in the circle, but got the puck ahead for Straub. Arneal to forecheck, and it's turned over. Freer, give it to Arneal. Here comes Scott Arneal. Back to the line, Gord Donnelly. Quick pass for Pack, and it went off his stick, and it's at center. Jimmy Pack for Gord Donnelly. Donnelly tried to go rink wide, fanned on it, fanned on it again. Having a little trouble with the puck there, and it's finally Donnelly who shoots it in. A little tired, he'll come off for a change with eight and a half to go in the second period. Puck was jumping all over the, there for Gordo. He just wanted to get it in, and uh, he had a tough time because the puck was jumping. Yashin brings it in. Here's Colin Chin who overskates, went back to get it, ripped it into the arrow zone, and now Laniel will turn in behind his net. A minute to go in the four on four. O'Connor across the line with Maurice and Slipchenko. Here's Slipchenko right side. Vadim wheeling, wheeling center. Oh, Maurice 
face. I don't think he expected the pass to come through. O'Connor, a wrist shot. Ing stopped it. And then he bobbled it. And then he covered it up. And then he held on to it with 8.05 to go in the second and a 6-1 Comet advantage. Well, Peter Ing had a great view of that shot, and he just took the whistle. Four on fours, I think, a pretty good matchup for us against the, uh, the, com the Comets. Peter, Peter's there. He saw the puck all the way. Caught it in the midsection. Got a little loose on him, but he jumped all over it. He's not going to give a whole bunch of rebounds. And actually, the scouting report on him uh, that we had was is that if he did have rebounds, make sure you go upstairs because he doesn't really get up that quick and he keeps his pads all over the bottom of the ice. Face off will be in the circle to the left side of Peter A. 12 shots for Houston, 23 for Fort Wayne. It's we the quality of shots of the night, Adam. Oh. That's what it is. We haven't been able to get the great quality on Peter Ring. They've been able to get great quality on Rob. Laniel with a puck on edge. And now Matthew getting into it with Dupuis. And here we go. Matthew, one of the rookies. And they both go down to the ice. And while the linesmen try to break these two up, we take the timeout. It's Fort Wayne 6, Houston 1. This is Saturday Night on Ice. A lot of great summit action coming up for the Houston Arrows starting Saturday, October 7th. The Detroit Vipers come to town. You also see the Vipers on the 20th. Look at one of the new teams in the IHL, the uh, Los Angeles Ice Dogs, who won last night 5-1. Uh, and then the Atlanta Knights on Sunday, the 22nd of October. Some great action. You can get your tickets right now. Just pick up the phone and call 627-AERO. The Allen County War Memorial. 44 years IHL hockey in this building. That was a great play by Matthew to get in front of the goaltender. Uh, that's what we need. We needed that traffic. They didn't like it. He gets in a fight, and uh, now he's in the penalty box, but he took the other guy off with him. But that's what we want, that traffic in front of Peter Ring. Play stays four on four, and the Comets move to center. Darren Smith gives to Miam. Miam got the defense crossed up a little bit, but they got back. Here's a center pass. Thompson stopped it, and the rebound escorted away by Dauber, and it's jumped on by Yo. Mike Yo through the neutral zone, across the line. Yo pulls up at the right circle. Snapshot. Kicked it off the post. He jammed that one right off the near iron. Oh, and that near miss. Boy, I'll tell you, they can't all be gems, can they? Well, they can. That was a great shot. Quick, quick release by Mike Yo. McCrory across the line with Yo. Centered. Here's Yo centered it. Oh, and a good defensive play by Peter Ing. And then O'Connor gets into it with Peter Ing. So we're going to get a penalty on the Houston Arrows. You know what, Adam? I don't think we are. I think this could be against the comments for pushing Miles in there. And I believe it is. Oh, good call. And that's the way it should be. Miles got pushed in there and he could not get out. And uh, he was just trying to get out of there. And he might have given Peter Ng a couple extra shots. But he was just trying to get out of there. And the thing was, Peter Ng left the net. I, I don't know if we've got that on the replay because it was way, way behind. Peter Ng thought it was against the, the arrows and he left the net. Hopefully Watch him. Yeah. You can see that Miles gets cross-checked in here. Right in the back. Yeah, see, and then he gives it to Ing, and Peter Ing is going to leave the net. Thinking that they're on the power play. But he was just trying to get out of the way there. Actually, Miles said before the game, too, that uh, he's got a bunch of friends in Calgary, Alberta, catching this on satellite tonight. They all went to a, a friend's restaurant and are watching the games. He wanted me to say hi to everyone in Calgary. Pucks at center ice. Arrows on the power play for the third time tonight. The last one they were on, they never found the offensive zone. See how they do here. Jimmy Pack from left to right. He'll carry the puck up and out of his zone. Pack, a quick, quick rink-wide pass. And Conroy couldn't catch up to it, and Pack has to regroup. 135 remaining in the power play. Pack and his team trailing 6-1. Puck off skates, and it's jumped on again by Tom Bissett. This is a rink-wide pass over to Conroy. Drills it into the Fort Wayne zone. Arneal's got it near side. Scott Arneal. And it was turned over, and it's jumped on by Rob Murphy, but tipped away by Pack, and now Arneal circles back at center ice. Scott Arneal wheeling through neutral zone. Traffic trying to get it to Conroy. He was hooked a little bit on the play. Play goes on, though. Puck turned over and jumped on by Freer. Base of the right circle. Gives it to Tom Bissett. Base of the right circle to Arneal. But he had it taken right off his stick by Murphy. And down the ice it goes with 6.18 to play in the second. 6-1 Fort Wayne. A minute to go on the power play for Houston. That's a good power uh, penalty killing unit of Fort Wayne because McBain and Murphy have played together many years in the Vancouver Canuck organization and they showed it out there. Puck is at 
the arrow blue line, then O'Connor ran into his own man, Laniel. Laniel thought he had the puck, and now it's a two-on-one shorthanded break. Evans with Chin. Evans centered, and a good defensive poke check by Dobson, and we'll get a penalty coming up to the Houston Arrows. Well, that's just the Fort Wayne Comets driving hard to the net again. We've noticed that all night long. They've driven hard to the net. With a 6-1 Fort Wayne, let's go down to Mike Greenlight. Well, you see the transition going back and forth uh, with the team here. I mean, uh, they had that Jake's fight, which tried to set the tone, and then uh, Matt, Matthew uh, in front of the net, and then the power play. Like you said earlier, they want to just take some baby steps here. I mean, don't even look at the scoreboard. Just worry about playing some hockey and play as a unit, as we said, in the keys of the game. Thank you, Mr. Greenlay. And hanging in there. Yeah, he's hanging in there. He's, he's looking good down there. Hanging out. He's, he, he gets all the inside scoops down there. He will be back up here. On the 7th of October, or I should say, back with us up here. Yeah, well, I, I hope to be back. I'm pretty sure I will. I'm going to uh, practice on Monday and uh, take all the normal shots I normally would. So if everything's well, uh, I'll be back on Thursday in Cleveland and then uh, for the big home opener. Here's a shot right on Thompson. Stopped it. Rebound came up, and then Lanyell mugged his man in front. Paul Willette. Good play. Is it? Was it a penalty? No, and that's what we, we mean by physical defense. That's what we have this year is that they're going to get knocked down if they stand in front of there, just like uh, Lanny did. Mark Laniel in the puck behind for Miles O'Connor. Watch him wheel, baby, across center. O'Connor, give it to McCrory. Penalty coming up to the college. McCrory, a drive! And a stick save made by Ying. Back to the line, Slipchenko. A bouncing puck behind. Cops into the bench. Extra attacker. Comets control. And we get a whistle. And the arrows are going to go back on the power play. But first, we have a minute 27 to kill off of a minor to Graham Townsend. Well, we're going to be 4-4 four and four here, and I think we match up very well 4-4 four and four against the Comets, uh, especially when you can get Mark Freer and Scotty O'Neill out there who have played well all last year together and then uh, come back with another unit. Looks like we're going to leave uh, Slavchenko and uh, McCory out there, which also work well together. 17 to go, excuse me. No, I was just going to say that Dave Ferris looks uh, pretty calm over there, and I guess so. He should feel that way right now with a 6-1 lead. Will it into the box? Two minutes. So we'll go four on four for a minute and a half, and then a 33-second power play for the Houston Arrows. And hopefully we can generate something here. Uh, you know, anytime Slavchenko's out there, uh, a lot of oh. things happen. He will be a factor this year. I guarantee it. I think if he can just bear down, this kid could put in 30 this year. No doubt in my mind. Well, that's what we're hoping for. Brant Richardson to Kevin Meehan brings it out at center ice. Again, we're at even strength, four on four, Straub across the line. Lost the puck, got it back, shot it into Dobson, and then Dobson will cover up and hold on with under five to play in the second, 6-1 Fort Wayne. There's another instance, though. Again, we talk about driving to the net. Seems like every time Rob has had to freeze it, there's always been a, a red or orange jersey in front of them. And uh, they've really driven hard to the net all night long. And that's one thing that's impressed me about Fort Wayne. And, and you know, any save, even though it might look routine, it gets a lot tougher when there's traffic in front. And then we got Al Conroy, who's playing banged up right now. And I tell you, it's a pretty gutsy performance because I saw him yesterday and I saw the way his leg looked. And uh, I said, Al, are you sure you're going to play? And he says, I know way. I know for sure I'm playing. Arrows are banged up as a team. Kevin Grant still another four to six weeks with a thumb. And we had Mike Yo's injury. Yeah. Conroy looked one through and it's picked up by the Comets and skated to center ice. Andy McBain to Rob Murphy across the line. Murphy steers it down into the corner to the left of Dobson. Jakes goes back to play it, reversed it for Tom Bissett. Bissett for Houston, weaving up and out of his zone, trying to meander through the forecheck of Colin Chin. Hands it over to Conroy, but Bissett in way ahead of the playoff sides. And they'll bring the faceoff back to center. Well, Al didn't see that, uh, or Bissett didn't see that Al was going to keep going with the puck and just kind of jumped off sides a, a little quicker than he should have. Andrew McBain, uh, there's another veteran guy. He, he actually played with Scotty Arneal with the Winnipeg Jets. Here he is. Steve Jake's kind of taking him out there. But Andrew McBain <laughs> has had a, a, a great NHL career. And now he's down here in Fort Wayne. He played in Vegas last year. He was part of a trade over the summer. And uh, he adds a little bit of experience and a little size to the Comet lineup. Off the faceoff. Comets control and get it out at center. In half a minute, the Earls will get about a 30-second power play. Krupke banks one for Arneal. Arneal cutting in, dropped it back for Gord Krupke. It was centered right through the 
slot, and Miles O'Connor is there. O'Connor gives to Arneal, stop shot. Nice stop by Peter Ang, and it stays behind Arneal. Arneal trying to feather a pass for Freer. Freer back for Arneal. In 10, the arrows will be on a power play, but Freer cannot handle a pass, and it's Colin Chin that'll skate it to center. Long pass, out along the boards, but Dobson will play it, and Scott Arneal is there. Arneal for Houston, behind the net for Miles O'Connor. Turns it up for Gord Krupke, and the arrows will break it up and out of their zone. From left to right, they come. Krupke for Freer. That a pass that he had to go back and get. Now Freer over to Slipchenko. He busts it in. Slipchenko trying to make the move. He's corralled by Darren Smith. Still with it, though. Still with it. Give it to Arneal. Back to line Donnelly, but a penalty coming up to Scott Arneal for slashing. Right in front of the referee, Joe Ernst, and the arrows' power play is over. I didn't even see that one happen. Uh, I didn't see Scotty uh, get down and slash him there. Slivy was trying to get the puck out to the uh, the point. Darren Smith there, he's played in the minors, played in Peoria. Last year he played here, had a fairly good year uh, with the comments, and they decided to re-sign him. Scotty, I'm sure Scotty's a little frustrated out there tonight. Uh, they've really contained him and Mark Freer all night. They've played them real tough. They've, uh, in the near side, Arneal going into it into the corner. He was given a pretty good shot from uh, Sean Cronin, and Arneal didn't like that, and he said, oh, there's a Bagwell swing. Actually, those two played together with the Jets, along with Andrew McBain. There's a Winnipeg Jet connection here tonight. Um, but Arnie, he doesn't care if he played with you or what. If he doesn't like what you did to him, he'll give you a shot back. Top of the puck, arrows have it. And in five seconds, the Comets will be on a power play. It'll be their sixth one of the night. Mike Maurice across the line for Houston, trying to cut in on goal. Maurice, who was one of the team leaders shorthanded last year with four shorthanded goals, trying to move in, but he lost the puck. Comets on the power play for a minute 40, leading it 6-1. Across the line, it's Oleg Yashin. Yashin trying to get it to Sean Evans. Evans, a centering pass, came out in front. Will it poke? Checked away by Dobson. It came to the slot. Sean Evans over to the right side for Kevin Wartman. Wartman steered it down for Miam. Waiting, waiting, shoots the flag and right on, and Dobson in front of that, and he will hold on. A great save by Rob Dobson, and he keeps it at 6-1. Dauber was, uh, the way Dauber has to play to be successful, he's right on, he was right on the top of his crease. Here comes that shot, slap shot, Dauber's right on the top of the crease. Saw the shot all the way, but there again, there's one of those orange jerseys bugging him. Here's the reverse angle now. Just waiting there for any rebound or anything else to develop. You know, you talked about one of the keys for the Houston Arrows was keep it simple. I think that was one of the four Wayne keys. They played it very simple. Well, they have tonight. They really have. And, uh, we got Mark Freer that uh, has to be frustrated along with Scotty. That uh, just hasn't had that much ice to skate. Now, Mark needs ice to skate. Puck brought out to center off the faceoff. And Brant Richardson retreats to his own blue line. Richardson for Fort Wayne to Brian Straw. Two and a half to go in the second period. 6-1 Fort Wayne. Darren Smith for the Comets trying to center it. It was pushed away by Jim Pack and skated up and out of his zone. Pack rips it in and a blocker save made by Peter Ring. And the puck goes up and out of play. Troy, you know, the thing is, is I really thought when the arrows were down 3-0, Scott McCroy gets a goal. And it looked like the arrows were going to come back, but I think the turning point would have to be the Andy Bezo goal 20 seconds later. Well, sure, that that, that hurt. Um, you know, that takes a little wind out of our, our sails. But when stuff when stuff happens like that, you just got to battle right back. And, uh, here we're going to have a long shot. And this is, you know, we haven't got those great quality shots. This is a save that any goaltender in this league has to make. So uh, it's just been tough for us to get in tight. They've played us very tough tonight. Brian Straub for the Comets in behind his net. Straub, he'll skate it from right to left. Straub's pass to Rob Murphy at center. Murphy hands it over, and McBain had it tipped away. Comets go back. Murphy to the right side for Grant Richardson. We're down to the final two minutes of the second period. Comets on the power play for another half minute. Jakes rolled it to the line, and down the ice it'll go. 150 to go, second period. Five goal lead for Fort Wayne. Still on the power play for another 20. Wartman, pass center, intercepted by Maurice. Here he comes shorthanded. Maurice cutting and looking for Conroy. Can't find him, another chance, and Wartman tipped that away. Off the right side for Kevin Meehan. Here comes Meehan across the blue line. Meehan waiting, waiting, still with a puck, cutting down the left side. He's harassed by O'Connor. O'Connor's shot from Cronin in front, another shot, and Thompson 
Couldn't block that. Good play in front. Crowd wanting a penalty. Won't get it as O'Connor got physical in front. Conroy blocks a pass, and it's skated out by Maurice. Arneal back, and we get a whistle. A two-line pass with a minute 14 to go in the second period and a 6-1 Fort Wayne lead. Tons of action in front of Rob Dobson there. He made two great saves. They're just putting so much pressure in front of the net, and they're playing it simple. Look at this. This is just a little simple shot on goal. Boom. Comet in front, good save. Another save right there. All they're doing is playing a very simple at him. They're putting the puck on the net and they're driving hard to the net. And uh, they're getting the inside position on us. We try his defense to play from the inside out and they seem to be getting on the inside and getting good position. Off the face off, Comets win it. They've owned the face off circle tonight. That's a great point. I haven't even uh, thought of it, but now going back to thinking they have uh, outdrawn our centerman. And puck possessions, half the game right there. Minute to go in the period. Arrows have it. Krupke steered it to an open wing, and it's jumped on by the Comet. Sean Evans, he'll drill that right onto Dobson, and he'll turn it over to Miles O'Connor. O'Connor clear to the line, not out, and here's a wide open Yashin. Oh, hit the post, rebound, score! Andy Beza. I think Dobson thought the first one went in. Well, Dobson turned around. Well, that's just unbelievable. That's uh, We had a turnover up by the blue line. The guy had until Christmas to make a move on Dobson. Yashin bangs it off the post. And then the second guy gets it again. You watch it again. You know, after this guy makes the pass, this guy has until Christmas to make his play. Gets it off the post. He goes, Dauber's looking for it. Can't find it. And the third guy puts it in. Tough break. Krupke came back, but in all, in all fairness yeah. to Gord, I don't think he knew, knew how to play. No, no. Well, Gord came back and uh, just lost sight of it. So it's 7-1. Fort Wayne. Strong. Steers one, but it's turned over to Yo. Yo flips one in there. Ink stopped and rebound. And Matthew couldn't get a shot away. Here's Townsend. He's belted in there by Nikolic. Nikolic in there with 20 seconds to play in the second period. 7-1 Comets. Yo at the hash mark. Steered it down for Graham Townsend. It centered, but Straub turned it. And we're down to the final 10 seconds of the second period. Buck fired into the Fort Wayne zone. Back to play it. It's Richardson. He's belted. And with three seconds left, that will do it for the second period. What a tough period, Adam. Four unanswered Fort Wayne Comet goals, and they lead 7-1. Just a tough period all around. Uh, we came out. All right, it's 7-1 Fort Wayne, and we'll have more from Fort Wayne right after this. This is Saturday Night on Ice. It's a 7-1 hockey game here from the Allen County War Memorial. I'm Adam Gordon, along with Troy Gamble. And I think at this point, Troy, you know, you look at the third period, whether they come back or not, that, that's not the issue. I think at this point, they just need to find something positive to build on to get them into the next game. Well, we just want to come out and play the way that we can for 20 minutes. Obviously, we've went 40 minutes and have not played arrow hockey the way that we want to play. You look at the shots, 32-15. It's just that we have not played well. So we've got to come out and go back to the basics that we said at the start and get things on track. As we go down to Mike Greenlay, Mike, I guess the question for you is your thoughts on Rob Dobson. He had a couple of soft ones, but it's hard to fault him tonight. Well, Rob, uh, Rob's playing really well, and, and I kind of feel for him. I mean, every goal he's been in this situation before, he's just uh, he's just gonna he's just gonna try and play his game. I know. Uh, I mean, he's had a couple of the pucks uh, right in his glove or in his pads, or he's he's had he's had he's playing the position properly. But hey, sometimes a goal's gonna go in uh, no matter what you do, and, and it's kind of frustrating for him right now. It's frustrating for everybody. Yeah, Mike, I, the one question I'd like to ask you is, is the mood of the bench, because last year when we were in these situations, we really battled hard. We showed the character of a great organization. Hopefully we're down there showing that, are we? I, I tell you what, uh, I'm, I'm actually very proud to be standing here because uh, all the arrows, I mean, you, no matter what happens, like I said, the word of the day is frustration because the guys are out there working very hard and they're trying to do all the right things. It's just things aren't just, just aren't bouncing their way. and and. One thing that I have seen is a lot of character because you have guys that are coming off the ice uh, after a very tough shift and the guys standing on the bench are giving them high fives saying, hey, stick with it. Let's go. We, we, we still got something going here. We got a good team. Let's show them. So that's the kind of thing that uh, that really makes me happy to see because because no, no matter what the outcome of this game is, it shows that they're going to be there uh, start of the next game and actually the start of the next period. Thank you. That's Mike Greenlay who's down at ice side and I thank you for uh, those fine comments. 
You know, the Arrows have made a pretty good impact on the community and the ice hockey. Youth ice hockey has really taken off, but you know there's another side of hockey that has really taken off, and that is roller hockey. And our UPN cameras happen to stop by one of the local roller rinks. Let's take a look at some of the action. Here at 7-1 Fort Wayne, we'll have more from the Allen County War Memorial when we return. It's Saturday night on ice. 7-1, the Fort Wayne Comets lead it. Adam Gordon along with Troy Gamble. And, you know, we haven't really talked about at least the one goal by Scott McCoy, which was a turning point, I thought, for the Arrows to maybe getting back into this game. Well, Scotty showed great composure uh, when he had a chance earlier and kind of lost it, fumbled it over his stick, and then he stuck with the puck wheeled back around and made a great play to shoot back short side. That's that, a veteran player. And that takes us into our scoring summary. Scott McCrory got the first goal for the Houston Arrows in that second period, and he made it 3-1 at 2-16. Yo getting the assist, and I thought maybe that was going to be the Arrows' key to coming back, but no. Four unanswered Fort Wayne Comet goals beginning with Andy Bezo, his first of two in the period. At 2-36, Andy McBain getting the assist. 4-1 Fort Wayne, make it 5-1 Comets. Oleg Yashin with a big drive at 3-50. Murphy and Wartman getting the helpers. Make it 6-1 Fort Wayne. Murphy this time getting his first of the year at 631 from Alex Nikolic and Brian Straub. It's 6-1 Fort Wayne and then they tacked on another to make it 7-1. Andy Bezo, his second of the game at 1916 from Yashin and Evans. Well, of course, last year, one of the big features we had was the timeout for good health by Columbia Hospital. We are proud to bring those back to you again. So let us take timeout for good health. Time Out for Good Health is presented by Columbia HCA Healthcare Corporation, a new commitment in healthcare together. Hello, I'm Dr. William Struzan, a child and adolescent psychiatrist with Bel Air Hospital and in private practice. Welcome to Time Out for Good Health, brought to you by Columbia HCA Healthcare Corporation. Today we're going to talk about stress and its meaning in our life. First, what is stress? Each of us has characteristic ways that we deal with difficult feelings that come up inside of us. When these coping mechanisms become overwhelmed, then we experience anxiety and stress. In order for us to have a healthy and happy life, all of us need a combination of love, work, and fun in our lives in good balance. When these things are out of balance, we often experience stress. In addition, human beings are social animals. So we need positive feedback from family and friends in order to feel okay about ourselves. Exercise and diet are large components of a stress-free life. All of us feel better when we have a good relationship with our bodies. None of us can eliminate feelings of stress and anxiety entirely from our lives, but if we look at these things as a call to examine ourselves, stressful feelings are a friend and not an enemy. Thank you very much for joining us for Time Out for Good Health. Time Out for Good Health was presented by Columbia HCA Healthcare Corporation, a new commitment in healthcare together. Columbia Healthcare Partners with 16 neighborhood locations in the greater Houston area. No other hospitals come close. 
It's not close here, 7-1 Fort Wayne, and we'll have more when we return. It's Saturday night on ice. We're back at the Allen County War Memorial. Adam Gordon along with Troy Gamble, a 7-1 hockey game. Must be tough for you sitting up here kind of watching this. I know you'd like to be down there. Well, certainly I'd love to be down there, and it's just a tough situation that uh, I was scared. I told you before the telecast that this is one of the toughest buildings to come into, especially on an opening night. And uh, they've come out and they've kind of kicked our butts. As we take a look at the highlights, uh, the one highlight for the Houston Arrows was a Scott McCrory goal. Well, he was just so patient. Most players would have shot it right about there. He took that extra second and shot it back where the goalie just came from. And uh, that's just a lot of patience and a great play by Scotty. Uh, the Fort Wayne Comets founded a 3-1 game, but they would come back with four and answer goals, and this was a nice chance right here for Brian Well, Scott. he made a great pass across to Rob Murphy, and Rob Murphy's not going to miss a one-timer with an open net. A valiant effort by Rob Dobson there. It almost, he almost got it with his glove, and he just dove over and, and tried his hardest. And then this guy had until Christmas. You know, he had all the time in the world, and then he got a rebound and uh, knocked it in. It's just a tough breaks all night long for us. So it is 7-1 in favor of the Fort Wayne Comets. When we return to the third period action, this is Saturday night on ice. Houston Arrows, a lot of work to do, down 7-1. And I think, again, one of the comments, Troy Gamble, that we touched upon is let's find some positive things. Things like, hey, if you're on the power play, you know, get some goals, work well on the power play, kill off the penalties, maybe get two, three goals in the period here and give them some confidence because it's a long 82-game season. You can't base it on one game. Well, I'm sure the one thing that Terry told them is let's get on with our four check. And uh, if you've noticed tonight, we really haven't been able to use our Arrows four check, check with, which is two-man busting in there hard, a third man high and reacting to the play. And we haven't been able to do that. And I'm sure he's going to want to do that. And I'm sure he's likely going to switch some lines around. Off the face off. Grant Richardson for Fort Wayne shoots the puck into the arrow zone. Townsend has it, chipped it off the boards and then got it back. Townsend to center ice. We start this period five on five as Townsend ripped a shot. And Peter Ring makes the glove save and he'll hold on. Richardson talking a little bit with Marquis Matthew. And well, they still want to get in there a little bit. Well, you can see from the start that Terry's already mixed it up. Uh, this is a line combination that has not been used all night long. And uh, Terry's going to mix some things up. He, you know, this is the first game of 82 games, and uh, let's not panic here. But let's get something going in a positive manner. And uh, you're going to see a little bit of a shakeup out there, I believe, with the line combinations. Matthew will take the draw for Houston. As Fort Wayne making a late line change at 7-1 Comets. Hey, opening night, October 7th. Your tickets are on sale right now, 627-A-E-R-O. Pick up the phone, get a call. The Arrows taking on the Detroit Vipers, October 7th. The home opener. I guarantee you, folks, it's going to be a packed house. So get your tickets now. Andy McBain off the face-off. Roll the pass for Murphy. Lead pass. On the left side, and it's tipped away Townsend as he roughs up his man, Andy Bezo. Rob Murphy's got it. Murphy back to the line. Cronin to drive, and it's blocked, and we're going to get a penalty on the arrows as Mark Lanyell was giving it to Andy Bezo. Kind of went into Rob Thompson a little bit, but interference the call, and the arrows will go shorthanded. Well, that's a, that's the type of a, a call that uh, Lanny's just trying to move him, and uh, Bezo, he's played well tonight. He's been one of the better players out there. You can see that Lanny's trying to, Mark Laniel is trying to move him out. Sometimes I use Lanny, but Mark Laniel is trying to move him out, and uh, Bezo, Bezo just falls back into Rob. But he's played excellent tonight. He's not known as a goal scorer. He's known as a tough, gritty forward, and he's caught it too. That almost is the way the game has went. We talk about them driving hard to the net. It's guys like that are going to get the garbage, and then he pots a couple. It's been simple hockey. We touched upon it, Troy. It's simple stuff. Bring the puck in. Someone go hard into the net. Somebody look for the rebounds, and it, 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 it's straight-ahead hockey. That's exactly what they brought at us tonight. Sean Evans, top of the slot. Let's the shot go. Dobson a glove save, and he'll hold on. It seems like an eternity when Colin Chin started this game 20 seconds with a goal. Well, it does. It's, it, the game has been a, a long drawn out affair. It always is when you're on the losing end of a, of a game right now as we are down 7-1. Um, it just makes it tough. Hopefully our bench will stay upbeat. We can work some kinks out here. This is a good, great opportunity to work on our penalty kill and our power play. Arrows win the draw. Jake's in his own zone. Whoa. Had a little trouble with the puck. 
It's controlled by Fort Wayne. Mitch Messier turned it behind for Kevin Meehan. Hands it over to Chin. Back for Meehan. Base of the left circle. Puck comes back to the line. Here's the drive. Stopped by Dobson. Rebound! And it's cleared by Jakes. And we're going to get a penalty. Interference. And I think... Uh, that should be on the comments, yeah. obviously. Uh, they were in Rob's face again, as they have been all night. I think Messi uh, is going to go. Messi or Colin Chin. Oh, one Chin, one yeah. Chin. Is it Colin Chin, Chin. going? Yeah. yeah. He was in the crease, looking around for one of those goals. He always does. He's always... Here's the big shot from the point. And you can see Colin Chin had just knocked Rob down and a little bit out of the play. So that's two minutes. And it should be two minutes. And, and uh, they've played strong all night. You know, they've been bumping in. I don't think we've, we've seen Peter Ring bumped once all night. We bet, I bet you we've seen Rob bumped seven, eight times. Arrows win the draw. And Jake's off the faceoff, shoots it back into the Fort Wayne zone. Peter Ring will slow. And Sean Evans plays it in behind the net. Evans tipped it off the boards. It goes back to center. For a minute and a half, we'll go four on four. And then the arrow will get about a 28 seconds of a power play. Aaron pass is blocked, but Freer jumped on it. Two on two with Arneal. Freer across the line. Gives to Arneal. Snapped it back. Puck between the circles. Jake's turn. Shot. Hit skates. I think it was blocked by Yashin. Yashin turns in the corner. Gives it over to Guy Dupuis. Dupuis to center for Evans. Right back to Dupuis. Across the line with Willette. Dupuis turning left shot and a save made by Dobson and he'll hold on. 18-22 to go in the third period. 7-1 Fort Wayne. That was good coverage by us coming back. That was just a straight two on two situation. Uh, we let the shot come out from high and then Dauber covered it up. That's simple hockey. That's good solid hockey that we want to play. Arrow's next action will be Thursday from Dundarina in Cleveland. It'll be a game heard exclusively on KPRC AM 950 and then the Arrow's Back on the network, on television and on radio, Saturday, October 7th, from the Summit in Houston, the home opener, the Arrows, and the mighty Detroit Vipers. Look forward to seeing you at the Summit. Comets win the draw. Puck came back. Oh, and a near chance in front, but Darren Smith couldn't find the puck, and Richardson had to hustle back to his own zone and clear it. Conroy, near side, tries to bring the puck in. He's worked on by Bezo, who's got two goals in the game. Miles O'Connor for Krupke. Give it back to O'Connor, to Al Conroy turning left side, trying to roll it into the Fort Wayne zone. It's jumped on by Fort Wayne and Richardson heads up ice. Richardson across the line of drive, but the Comets are offside, and the faceoff comes back to center. It seems, Adam, just from watching the the first couple minutes here, that we are trying to simplify things. We're we're covering our men a lot better, and uh, on situations on two on two, our coverage is a lot better. Al Conroy there. He's, he's going to be great as the year goes on here. I think people are going to be very surprised at how festy this guy is. You know, everyone talks about losing Mario Cittaroni, but we're going to have an Al Conroy for all year. And uh, Mario was, was great for this organization last year, but I'm sure Al can jump in and, and fill those boots and hopefully a little more. Fort Wayne with a puck off the draw. They'll push it into the arrow zone. Jim Pack takes over. Steers a pass ahead for Slivchenko in a foot race with Richardson. Slivy got there. Slivchenko at a lot point. He's got some ice. Slivchenko makes the move. Cutting in. A pass for Pack. Shoots. Hit skates. Back to the line. Donnelly wide. Shoots. Oh, and he hammered a bullet wide. And Pack a drive. And he fanned on it. And the puck is cleared. Oh, Peter Ng felt that like a hangover the next morning. Oh, man. A big drive from Donnelly and an icing call coming up to Fort Wayne. Looks like Peter Ng might have been hurt a little bit on that play. He's uh, moving his arm. He fell back in an awkward position. He might have banged his head or an elbow. It looks like he's favoring his left elbow right now. Peter Ng has been no, just right Peter Ng has been just that sparkling. Yeah, he has. He's, he's played well tonight. Um, I'm sure that we would have loved to test him a little bit more than what we have. But uh, Peter Ng, he's a solid goaltender. He's a big guy. Um, he's made a couple big saves. You know, you look at the stuff shot by Scotty or Neil last period, and he made a couple saves in the first period. When you get goaltending, you know, goaltending's a big part of it. But another big part is to make sure that we're staying on the outside, and that's we're, we've just had such a tough time to get those good quality chances tonight. Face off in the circle to the right side of Peter Ring. Comets win it, clear it to the line, not out. Jake's held it in. Jake's turns it down the left side for Maurice. Back to the line. O'Connor a drive, and that just goes wide. Puck in front. Oh, and the Comets got back played some great team defense in clear. That's been the story. That's been the Comets team defense. When the Arrows do get a rare chance in front, Fort Wayne has been on their case. They've, they've really been on top of the pucks all night. Any loose pucks, they seem to be the guys on top of them. 
Jakes gets it over left side. Yo can't bring it in. And now it is controlled by Maurice at his own blue line. Maurice a pass behind Bissett. It goes back into the Eurozone where Dobson slows. Miles O'Connor. Give it to Yo. Tipped it up for O'Connor. Maurice tries to bring it ahead. Sean Evans back in his own zone. Four check by Bissett. E. Dupuy. His pass intercepted by Jakes. Jakes across the Fort Wayne line. And Ing will slow it in behind the net. Oh, and then Sean Evans playing peekaboo with the arrow four checker, and the arrows almost did that. Boo! They almost booed him, is right. I think Sean Evans has played very well for them also tonight. He's moved the fuck up well for them. I always liked him as a defenseman with Milwaukee last year. He's a very mobile defenseman and really good with a pass and good with a puck, and he's, I think, a pretty fine acquisition for the Comets. Very good one. Puck goes into the arrow zone. Goes into the near corner. Laniel fighting for it with Willette. He's taken hard into the boards. Laniel trying to dig it out of the scrum. It's picked loose and right back to the line. Richardson wide. Shoots Dobson. Left pad save. And it's jumped on by Matthew. Mikey Matthew for Houston. Left side. Hits the brakes. Lost the puck. Townsend trying to come up with it. Townsend lost it. And Fort Wayne clears it. Oleg Yashin across the line. Yashin wrist shot. The stick save by Dobson. Five minutes, or four and a half rather, played in the third in a 7-1 hockey game. Fort Wayne leads it. McCrory for Houston. McCrory a shot. That was blocked. It came out in front, and it's cleared to center. It goes into the arrow zone. Out of the net, Dobson. Steers one up to the right side for defenseman Gord Donnelly. Snap pass to Slimchenko. Slimmy down the left side. He's out there with Freer and Arneal. Jim Pack has it for Houston. Back to his own blue line, Donnelly. Quick pass for Arneal. Scott Arneal for Houston across the line. Trying to center when it goes down to Peter Ng. He will cover up, and he will hold on. Let's take time out. We've played five minutes here in the third period, and this is Saturday Night on Ice. Saturday Night on Ice continues. October 7th from the Summit in Houston. The Arrows hosting the Detroit Vipers. Oh, boy, get your tickets. But if you can't get your tickets, we'll have it right here on UPN 20 and KPRC 950 AM. Drive by Pack right on a right pad save made by Inc. And the puck is turned around by Wartman. Kevin Meehan in the corner. He's pushed around by Donnelly. Puck tipped by Colin Chin. And it goes back for Jim Pack. Jim Pack for Houston. Quick pass for Donnelly. And it's intercepted by Wartman and fired into the arrow zone. I just noticed, Adam, the shots are 37-18, and that's pretty indicative of the score also. Puck shot down, icing indicated. The Comets are back to touch, and icing is the call. The Comets lead it by a score of 7-1, to and let's go down to Mike Greenlee. Mike? Well, uh, the first, one of the things that was said in the dressing room uh, in between the second and the third was, let's go out there as if it's a 0-0 game. And you see that uh, even though the Comets are still getting a few shots on net, uh, you see a little bit of offense coming from uh, coming from the Houston Arrows. So uh, the guys are trying to treat this as, uh, as best as possible, trying to you know come out of this game with, uh, with some positive uh, things. Thank you, Mike. The UPN cameras catching even the great sound effects as the Arrows making changes. And that was someone coming off that wasn't happy. It sounded like he was no. slamming the gate pretty good. Uh, 14.30 to play in the third, and a 7-1 lead that explains a lot. But as we said, and I, I want to keep hammering the fact that, uh, I want to hammer the fact that, you know, there's 81 of these left, so one game a season does not, and you know that in any sport. Yeah, that's for sure. There's a puck that's centered out in front of his block. I'll give you a case in point. I think everybody was ready to write off the Houston Rockets about mid-season last year, and all they did was win back-to-back -back NBA championships, folks. Bucko's still in the arrow zone. It goes to Slivchenko. And Freer will skate it up and out at center. Freer across the line with Arneal and Slivchenko. A shot right on. He stopped it. Oh, Mark Freer split the D. And the Comets jump on it. College in. Work one ahead for Guy Dupuy across the line. That is whistled down on the offsides. And then Miles O'Connor gives Guy Dupuy. And a little blast along the boards. That was just a solid body check, and they took a little offense to it. It was great to see Mark Freer have that big burst of speed, go right down the middle, and get a pretty good scoring chance on Peter Ring. That's what we need out of Mark. We need that speed and that creative playmaking. I think one thing for Terry Raskowski and Dave Tippett, I think they're also going to be looking with 13 minutes, 57 seconds to go in line combinations, not just defensive tandems, but the guys up front, guys that are playing well. I'm sure Terry is just going to try and mix it up a little bit and 
get people ready for uh, Cleveland on Thursday. Sure. Plus, you also might see a little Matho play a little bit more at center. Uh, he's a young kid. This is his first IHL game. I'm sure they want to see what he can do. I don't think he's played that poorly either. I thought he's had a pretty good hockey game. I agree with you, Adam. Gord Krupke for Houston in behind his own net. Trying to get it up there. Dodge to Fort Wayne check is coming in there to lower the boom was Darren Smith. It goes back into the arrow zone and Laniel is there. Four check by Willett. He chopped it ahead. Yo brings the center. Mike Yo for Houston across the line. Yo had it tipped away, but McCrory jumps on a loose puck. McCrory rolled it down low. It cycled along the boards. Laniel banks in the left circle. Laniel pinching from his point. Laniel still the puck turning. Delayed penalty coming up to the Fort Wayne Comets. Dops into the bench. Comets trying to play it. They blast along the boards. Can the Comets clear it? No. Finally, they can drill it. And the arrows are going to go on the power play when we return 7-1 Fort Wayne. This is Saturday night on ice. Goes on the power play, and again, Jim Pack, who's normally out on the power play, will sit this first shift down. But I think at this point, you're just kind of finding combinations here. Maybe the arrows get a goal, something to build on. Sure, we're going to see Al Conroy back on the point. I think we're going to see that develop more as the year goes on. Uh, obviously, uh, Miles O'Connor is going to be out there uh, because he's going to be that power play quarterback. Yeah, it looks like uh, Terry has some choice words out there for some of the officials, it sounds like. I don't know what they are. Well, I think he, he wants the face up right at the top of the circle. He wants it deeper right at the, uh, the dot. Top of the puck, and the arrows have it. Conroy, left point, lets a shot go. Stick save beat by Ng. It slides to the near side. Cronin trying to clear. Swept away by Murphy, but not out. Here's McCroy. Oh, and a pass for Slipchenko. He hesitated on it. I don't know if he expected it. And then Slipchenko turned it over, and Rob Murphy shoots it down the ice. Well, they, they, they did a good job at clearing the puck tonight. When they get it, they put it all the way down the ice. Not in the neutral zone, but all the way down. 12.48 to go in the third, 7-1 Fort Wayne, a minute and a half on the power play. Arrows bring it across line, but the Fort Wayne Comets just turn and shoot it down the ice. I can't find a flaw in the Fort Wayne Comets game. Offense, defense, penalty kill, their power play has a goal tonight. They look like the Denver Grizzlies of oh. last year in midseason form. O'Connor steers one left side for Conroy, and across the line, that is offsides. This is something I guess maybe you will expect for the first few games is we've seen a lot of offsides for the Houston Arrows, and one where really they haven't been forced off, so... It's been kind of tough, but we take a look at the Pizza Hut goalie comparison, and there's not much to compare. Dobson has made 31 saves tonight compared to Peter Ng. And, uh, Peter Ng yeah, had, has uh, 19 saves, actually. But, again, we go back to the quality, and uh, Ng's likely saw eight quality chances, and I'm sure Rob has saw about 27, 28. That's too many in a game. As a goaltender, Adam, we only look for about 16. You saw a lot of shots in the preseason, I really thought, as well. I mean, just all three games. Think back to the Kansas City game with 40 shots that Dobson faced in the win. Arneal, back to the line for Jim Pack. Roll it back to Arneal, into the circle. He tried to center it, it's blocked. Jim Pack lets a shot go, that is blocked. And Kevin Meehan will turn it. There's been more blocks tonight than a Chicago First Avenue. I mean, everything seems to be getting blocked tonight for the Arrows. Arneal down low, Laniel behind the cage, center, it scores! Scott Arneal! And it's a power play goal, and the Arrows now at 7-2 Fort Wayne. Well, that's a positive sign right there, is that we took it in deep, we've been working it around, we didn't get frustrated. Scotty Arneal, Johnny on the spot, right in that slot again, and uh, when you give him that puck in the slot, most times he's gonna bury it as he did there. 8-12, the time of the goal. Laniel made a great pass, right on his stick. Arnie's not going to miss that shot hardly at all, ever. And uh, he put it right up in the middle of the net. And on the reverse angle, you can see Arnie, he's just trying to find the hole in the seam, just as a quarterback does. And uh, he found the hole all right and uh, buried the puck. Puck shot into the Fort Wayne zone. Comets go back. Wartman rolled it along, but it's picked up by Marky Matthew. Matthew jammed it to the near side. Pinching was Jakes. Jakes trying to find Graham Townsend. He's in a rustling match with Wartman. It's lugged out of there by Matthew. He tried to center it, but Colin Chin is there. Comets with a five-goal lead. 11.25 to play. Jakes, the yo. He's imprinted by Nikolic. And are they going to go? Yeah. It's going to be Alex Nikolic and Mike Yo, and Nikolic is giving it to Yo right now with left hand. I don't think Yozzi thought he was a southpaw, and Nikolic has been giving it to him. Nikolic, if you remember, didn't want to go with Conroy, and Yo picks him up and dumps him like early morning trash along the ice. But Alex Nikolic. 
foot, giving Mike Yo a few left hands. Well, he seemed to get the jump on Yosey there, and I don't know if uh, Mike knew he was a lefty. I've never heard of the kid before, and uh, we likely didn't even have a scouting report on him. While they sort out the penalties, we take time out at 7-2 Fort Wayne. This is Saturday night on ice. Saturday night ice on UPN 20 and KPRC AM continues on October 7th. The Arrows home opener against the Detroit Vipers. Saturday the 14th in Cincinnati. Wednesday the 18th in Indianapolis. And you can get your tickets for opening night by calling 627-AERO. I was, just, I was just checking some stats there on Nikolic in uh, the last three years pro that he's played. He's averaged 250 penalty minutes, so uh, he's not one of those guys scared to be a little timid and dropping those gloves. Here comes Matthew for Houston. Base the left circle. Hands it over. McCroy centered. The shot by Bissett just slammed wide of the net. Now Bissett again centered, and that just goes wide. Back to the near boards. Chip down McCrory. McCrory and Colin Chin working hard in the corner. And then, oh, McCrory was just belted by Colin Chin. Here come the Comets. Messier's pass, or I should say, the pass to Messier was intercepted. McCrory turned it around, and now here's a chance for Donnelly upstairs, and Aim got a shoulder on it. And it goes behind the net. Mitch Messier, oh, lost an edge, crashed and burned, turnover. Bissett couldn't get the shot away. 10.33 to go in this third period. 7-2 Fort Wayne. Jim Pack gently rolled the puck into the Fort Wayne zone. Back goes Sean Evans. Watched by Arneal. He's given a rough ride along the boards. And the Comets turn, but not get it out. O'Connor, the drive. Kicked out of there by Peter Ng. And the Comets shoot it. Oh, heads up into the bench, almost in Mike Greenlay territory. He may have almost gotten a save. Uh, well, I think he could have had a glove save down there by the looks of it. I don't know. I see Sudsy, the trainer down there, just tossed it back up into the stands. There's a good look at Dave Tippett, who... Uh, the other night got his first ever coaching win when we played the exhibition game. Uh, Dave coached all game. Now he's in the assistant role there tonight, and I'm sure that he's wondering what could we have done different to prepare or what could we have done different so that we wouldn't be in the situation of a 7-2 game, 10 minutes and 17 seconds left. So I'm sure we're going to have to go back to the drawing board this week, and it might not be a pleasant sight around the aerodrome on Monday. Could be a good work day for the Arrows. Off the faceoff, Comets have it. Sean Evans trying to clear it, but Jake's read the play and held it in. But the Comets tipped it away, and it comes back to center ice. We're at five on five hockey. Halfway through this third period, arrows down by five. Arneal, he's given a pretty good ride from Guy Dupuy. Puck is brought into the Fort Wayne zone. They scrum it on along the far boards. Slipchenko's in the middle of it. And the puck is shot all the way down the ice. No icing as the arrows hustle back. You know, the one thing about Vadim Slipchenko is they're trying to get defense as part of his role. And I think you're going to see it improve Vadim in both ends of the ice. Well, in training camp, he was way better than he was the year before. And, and that's a great start for Vadim. He knows that if he's going to get a chance to play here regularly to get his 30 goals, he's got to play good, solid defense also. So the face-off as whistle stops play will be in the circle to the right side of Rob Dobson. Houston trailing 7-2 here in the third period with 9.39 to play in this hockey game. Rob Murphy to take the draw. He's, he's had a solid game tonight. Rob Murphy has had a solid game. And there's Vadim who, uh, who knows that if he's going to get that ice time, he has to play that solid D, and uh, he's willing to sacrifice that. Puck control by McCrory. It's snapped ahead to Conroy, and he'll skate the center. Conroy through the neutral zone for the Houston Arrows. Across the line, dropped it for Laniel. Pinching left point, a shot and a stick save made by Ng. And the puck slammed out in front. Ng bobbling around. He's lost his stick a few times, and then what a play by Al Conroy. Al Conroy behind the play, although the Arrows didn't have the puck. Conroy played his stick trying to get it away from uh, Peter Ng. If the Arrows could have come up with a puck, that would have been an interesting turn of events. Now the Arrows in their own end turn it over in front, but. Kevin Meehan couldn't get anything accomplished in the arrows trying to clear. Maurice along the near side, tipped away by Meehan. Rolled it near side, Murphy reversed it down low. Meehan in after the puck, Krupke after it as well. He'll be the first one and then send it over to Laniel. Behind the arrow, Twine. Give it to Maurice. 8.46 to go in this one. 7 2 Fort Wayne. Arrows can't clear the zone. It's brought in. Messier makes the move. Right in! Out, send down. Snacking the pads and he will hold on and now. Bezo wants to go with Al Conroy. Bezo's got two goals, but as you said, Troy Gamble, he's also known for his rest up, but Al Conroy says, not going to happen. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Bezo, he's played well tonight. He's been all around the puck, and 
Here's a good save. Dauber lies down, stacks the pads, takes the bottom of the net. That's just from a situation where we got to make sure we clear that puck when we get the opportunities. And there's one thing that we didn't do as well as we'd like is that when we're at our blue line, it has to get out. When we're at their blue line, it has to get deep. And uh, those are a couple things that I don't think we executed as well as we wanted tonight. Face off in the circle to the right side of Rob Dobson. Drop of the puck. Arrows have it. Jim Pack behind the net. Oh, man. Just unloaded on by Bezo. Puck came out in front and it goes wide of the net. Bezo has been all over the ice. And he's going to get a penalty interfering with Gord Donnelly. And everybody getting in. And Bezo takes a swing at Donnelly. And Donnelly wants at it. Bezo came smoking in there. And Bezo, uh, Donnelly wants in there. And everybody gathered. The original penalty was coming to Andy Bezo, which was one of the new obstruction penalties that we exactly. talked about at the top of the broadcast. I don't think he wants to be messing with Gord Donnelly either. Bezo will be escorted to the penalty box. Well, 8-28. Playing the third, 7-2 for Wayne. It goes back, back to that draw, Adam. And another thing I've noticed as the game has progressed is that They've been able to get pressure, even when we win the draws, they've been able to get pressure on our defense, pinning them up against the glass tonight. Now, this is the penalty, as you can see, Bezo, for those of you watching on UPN 20, comes in and then, well, Donald kind of gives him the old hammerlock and then imprints his head into the boards. I think uh, Donnelly was just trying to give him a little swat and say, beat it, punk, get out of my way. I'm trying to get the block, I guess. Donnelly. Who just got in the other day? Oh, and who has well, him to and be Jimmy tough? Pack both. It, you know, it that's, has to be tough on them. They haven't been playing with us. Uh, all of a sudden, they come in. They've had one, maybe two practices at the most, and uh, they're playing all the time. So that's been a tough, tough transition for them. Donnelly, who's longtime NHL veteran, played a couple of seasons with the Dallas Stars, and we talked about his four-year stint with Winnipeg and three years with Buffalo, three years with Quebec. He's kind of moved around, but everywhere he's played, he's been a physical presence. His NHL total penalty minutes, folks, 2,069. Let me take this a step further when you talk about the four defensemen in Gord Donnelly, Gord Krupke, Miles O'Connor, and Jim Pack. You have over 1,800 pro hockey games in those four. Although maybe tonight it has not showed, but let's not forget, two of the guys, Pack and Donnelly, just got in. These guys need some time to gel and play together. Sure. As a team, we need time to gel. And uh, tonight, we just caught a, a tough Fort Wayne team. You know, we came into the jungle. We said it right at the start. Let's get out of the first five minutes. And we didn't get out of the first minute, let alone the first five. And, and that kind of set the tempo for the comments. The extra minor going to Andy Bezo, which was the original interference call. So the arrows are on the power play. Third one of this period, the last time they were on the power play. Uh, Scott O'Neill scored at 8-12. See if the arrows can do it again. If the comments win the draw, they'll shoot the puck back into the Houston zone. O'Connor turned it over to the right side, and Mark Freer skates it across the line. Freer got by Cronin, staying tough with the puck. Freer, face of the right circle. Freer to Arneal at the hash marks. Get it back to Miles O'Connor. Back to Arneal. Wines takes the shot down low. Freer centered for Jake's upstairs. Oh, my word! What a left pad saved by Peter Ing. He looked like he was doing the Jane Fonda workout. He kicked his leg up there so high. O'Connor a drive, and that hit skates from Colin Chen. Oh, man, what a stop. Bisson along the left side. That's just instinct, folks. Bisson, left side to the line. Jake's wines, fakes. Here's the drive. Cameron wide rebound. Oh, what a big save made by Peter Ng. He is standing on his spleen in this hockey game, especially in the last couple of chances. He's made a couple of terrific saves, just showing his great reaction and presence in the goal. Puck goes down for Freer. Arrows had it. Freer trying to dodge a Cronin check. It's picked loose by Dupuy and shoveled all the way down the ice. Under a minute to go in the power play. 7.15 to play in the third period and a 7-2 hockey game. Fort Wayne leads it, but the Arrows, no quit tonight. They have kept coming. Slivchenko across the line. Slivy cutting right in on goal! And he tried to feather Conroy and it went just too far. Puck along the boards, Jimmy Pack grinding it out with Paul out of the comments. Slivchenko got it back to the line for Conroy. Conroy, top of the slot, line, shoot, hit the post! Wow! It's the third post tonight. Conroy for Slivchenko. Shoots! Deflected wide by Maurice. And the puck is clear. Oh, man! Great shot by Al Conroy. He got in the middle of the ice and he just blasted a shot. 
Slivchenko with 10 on the power play. Slivy waiting, waiting. Oh, and his pass intercepted by Richardson. It shot down the ice, and that will do it for the Houston Arrow power play with 6.30 to go in the third and a 7-2 hockey game. That's one thing about Al Conroy that a lot of people don't know is that he does have a great shot. He's got that short little stick, and when he gets his body behind it, he can blast them as hard as anyone. And Matthew is drawn off sides, and and we'll take time out. It's 7-2 in favor of the Fort Wayne Comets. Four from Fort Wayne right after this. This is Saturday night on ice. Ninth inning today and uh, advanced the runner, but he couldn't get him home. And uh, the Astros came back and, and had a great win today. 9-8. They're in the hunt. I got to tell you, I, I, real quickly, though, my team, the Seattle Mariners, I don't know how they did tonight. I haven't seen a score, but... I'm telling you, the city of Seattle is going nuts, folks. I think a lot of guys are looking at the referendum vote to see if they're getting a new stadium. I hope they do. I, I hate do. to see the Mariners leave. But right now, the arrows 